first, let's check out today's Pop Start News. We're going to start with this year's big news on the Academy Awards on Tuesday. The president of ABC Entertainment announcing that this year's Oscars will actually be returning with a host. It's the sense. first time in three years that Hollywood's biggest night is going to include a master of ceremonies. You might recall Jimmy Kimmel was the last man to hold that position back in 2018. And although there's no word yet on who's going to get the gig, Judd Apatow, of all people, throwing out some suggestions online writing on Twitter. I would like to suggest Steve Martin and Martin Short host. It would be pure joy, and we need that. Well, couldn't go wrong with that. No, well. absolutely. Steve's hosted the Oscars for uh, a few times over the years, and he's, well, he's never been afraid to poke fun at the whole thing. The proceeds from tonight's Oscar telecast, and I think this is so great, will be divvied up among huge corporations. <laughs> so simple, so funny. Yes. Everything's funny right yeah. now. The way yeah. the world is spinning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Whoever hosts that show is going to crush. It's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, the Academy Awards set for March 27th. Next up, Reese Witherspoon yeah, and Ina Garten. The, the, the barefoot Contessa is keeping it real in the comment section of Witherspoon's latest post on Instagram. On Monday, the actress shared four healthy habits that she's working on. Here they are. They include drinking a big, giant glass of water in the morning, trying to get outside, huh? read more, maybe 90 minutes a day, get to bed earlier before 10, don't indulge mm -hmm. in any of that late night TV binging. Mm -hmm. Well, as great as all of that sounds, Ina thought that maybe those weren't so realistic. So she responded with her own list of perhaps easier habits. <laughs> One, drink a large, uh, more large Cosmos. Two, stay up late watching addictive streaming services. Series. Three, stay in bed in the morning playing Sudoku instead of reading a good book. And finally, four, spend more time safely with the people that I you love. I love it. That's Not why so we cool. love Ina. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so did everybody online. The comment section blew up with support for Ina. Uh, users on Instagram leaning a little bit more towards the beloved TV <laughs> chef's recipe for happiness. But Reese. T T minor. T yeah. T yeah. minor. All right right now. Yeah. Next up, Foo Fighters. The band's heading to the big screen. There's a new horror comedy out with the band. On Tuesday, the first trailer dropped for Foo's upcoming flick. It's called Studio 666. And in the movie, they really go for it here. The band heads to a creepy mansion in Encino, California to work on their next album when things start taking a bit of a supernatural turn. The sound of this house is the sound of album 10. How are you feeling? Everything okay? Ever since we moved into this house, my mind is flooded. We all have writer's block. This is not just a creepy rock and roll house. It allows spiritual entities to cross into our world. It looks crazy. It looks funny. That's nuts. That's wild. There's a funny scene where Dave's working on a new song. He's pitching to the band. He starts at the beginning of Everlong, one of their famous songs. And yeah. the band's like, uh, Dave, that's Everlong. We we made that 20 years ago. <laughs> He's like, oh, what's wrong with me? Uh, the movie also stars, as you might have seen there, Whitney Cummings, Will Forte, and Lionel Richie. Studio yeah. 666 hits theaters on February 25th. And quickly and finally, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. After the stars and filmmakers of Being the Ricardos just took three of the biggest awards at last Sunday's Golden Globes, the iconic Hollywood couple now at the center of a new project heading to streaming. Prime Video is going to be debuting a new documentary in March. It's called Lucy and Desi. It's going to examine the careers and relationship more in depth of Ball and Arnez. That film is being directed by none other than today's queen of oh, comedy wow. herself, our friend Amy Poehler. Ooh. And the doc's going to feature an all-star lineup of the world of comedy. We've got Bette Midler, uh, Carol Burnett, Charo. Norman Lear, just to name a few. Lucy and Desi will start streaming on March 4th. And we've got a few more noteworthy items here because it is Pop Star Plus after all. So first up, Bowen Yang, the SNL star, stopped by the Kelly Clarkson show on Tuesday and shared a funny moment that he felt like he was officially a true New Yorker after making the big move to the East Coast. So when you moved here, like, when did you finally feel like I am now a New Yorker? I was, um eating dim sum, and then I went to Columbus Park in Chinatown, and there was a, a pigeon lady, very home alone, too. I saw a rat scurry over her foot, and then she freaked out and screamed, and I thought, wow, this is the most New York thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's funny that, like, you're chill with pigeons, but not chill with rats, because I feel like that's a package deal. I feel like it's a flying rat. God made them on the same day, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> 
That's a fact, by the way. Pigeon Lady and Rat are definitely two of the boxes on the official New Yorker bingo board. So welcome to the Big Apple Bowen. Funny story there. And finally, Simon Cowell, the America's Got Talent judge, is officially engaged. Finally, People Magazine confirming the news on Tuesday. Cowell and fiance Lauren Silverman went public with their relationship back in 2013. Of course, they share seven-year-old son Eric together. So we're sending big congratulations out to their growing family. All right, those are your headlines for today. When we come back, nanny star Fran Drescher shares the key to easing her anxiety thanks to her furry friend. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. Did you know that Fran Drescher is a huge dog lover? She's even had a famous one of her own. Get this, Chester, you might recall, the dog on her hit show, The Nanny, was actually Fran's dog. And she told us all about that and how her pets have shaped her life for our My Pet Tale series. I starred on The Nanny and I wrote a part for my first dog ever, Chester Drescher. a long time. Nanny, fine, please. He doesn't like strangers. <laughs> Chester was an amazing dog because he was extremely consistent in his behavior. We knew what he would do under certain circumstances. So we wrote towards that. And that was why every time, you know, Cece Babcock grabbed him away from me, we knew that he would growl. Oh, how? So we always had her do that. You need some time to get used to you. I mean, you can't expect a dog to just jump into your arms and love you at first sight. Mr. Sheffield. Oh, you got a real puppy. Oh, how sweet. Oh, look how friendly he is. And it was great working with him because he was always on the set anyway. I'm always of the camp, must love dogs. I have a, a dog now, uh, Angel Grace, and I rescued her just days before lockdown, and then she rescued me. And for the first couple of months of our relationship at my house, you know, it was just her and me. I don't think she really uh, knew what was happening, but all of a sudden, you know, it was just the two of us for a couple of months, and so it really did bond us. And we're very, very close now, and she's three years old, and I travel with her, and she's my service animal, so I'm just very grateful to have the first big dog I've ever had. And, you know, she uh, gives me added security and, uh, and helps me through situations that sometimes would otherwise um, make me anxious. She's kind of different shades of white and bone, and I thought she was so loving when I met her at the rescue place, and so sweet uh, that uh, I said, you know, are you an angel? Did Samson send you to me? And Samson was the dog that sadly uh, had died just days earlier uh, from a stroke. 
I said, are you an angel? Is that your name? And it just seemed suitable to her because she is such an angel. She is definitely a big part of the family. She's got all these other mothers who come and take care of her if I have to go out of town and I can't take her with me. Dog is God spelled backwards, and I think that dogs are here to teach us unconditional love, to remind us that there's room in our hearts to love another, even if you've loved and lost. And I think that every human should experience unconditional love. It's just a, a bond between two species that really is unparalleled. I just, you know, couldn't live without having a canine to love and care for and feel loved by and share my bed with. Just be there as a friend and a companion and company, a wonderful company. In fact, as a cancer survivor, you know, I always tell other people recently diagnosed, make sure your pet sleeps in the bed with you because at night is when your imagination and fear starts to run wild because you don't have the distractions of the day. And if you don't have a pet, get one. Love talking about dogs. Love hearing people talk about their, they're so passionate about their pets. Coming up on Popstar Plus, Olympic legend Lindsay Vaughn. I'm not sure if she has an animal or not, but she tells us about her new memoir after this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. We're back now. Three time Olympic medal winner, royalty, Lindsey Vaughn, retired from skiing in 2019. And when she did, she's the most decorated skier of all time female. Now in a new memoir, she pulls back the curtain on what her life is really like. And she spoke about it on Today. She's won 82 World Cup wins, 20 World Cup titles. She's got three Olympic medals to her name. And now, guys, she's peeling back the curtain on her remarkable life and career. It's a new memoir. It's called Rise, My Story. What a beautiful title, Lindsay. It's so good to see you. And as I'm looking at you, I'm thinking of like America looking at Lindsey Vaughn and saying, wow, talk about somebody who has it all. Talk about someone who's had a charmed life. Talk about someone who seems without care or worry. But when you page through the pages of Rise, you learn all of the vulnerabilities, the depression you battled. And I was just thinking, was it cathartic to finally say, hey, this is me? To your point, everyone thinks that 
you know, life is great, I have success, you know, everything is perfect, but first of all, no one is perfect, and I definitely am not, you know, I've had my struggles, you know, obviously, I've crashed many times in my career, I've come back from many, many injuries, but I also had personal struggles, and um, most of which I talk about, you know, some things I don't, like my relationships, but you know, for me, my story, it, it was really important for me to get out my story, you know, after retiring from my skiing career and really being able to close that chapter, so to speak, of my life and move forward. Let's talk about battling depression. It happened when you were a teenager. It kind of hit you when your parents split up. And I don't think, I, th I think when people think of depression, they don't know how bad it can get. If you were to try to put your finger on how bad it got, what would that be? I mean, I definitely, you know, struggled and, and when I was a teenager, I had a very hard time. Um, and then I, I got through it, you know, I, I, I got medication and um, saw a therapist and things like that. And it really reared its head most of the time when I was injured, especially after my second ACL surgery and I was missing the Sochi Olympics and, um, you know, I was very isolated and just very depressed. But um, I had a great support system and that's really what mm -hmm. got me through it, you know, being able to lean on other people and, and also being able to talk openly about it, you know, after uh, the, in 2012 I actually talked openly about it and I felt like that really opened the door for me, it was a huge weight off my shoulders and again now writing this book it mm -hmm. feels like an even bigger weight has been, been taken off my shoulders. Well I picture you at the top of the hill, you know, and a lot of people are battling nerves and expectations, you're battling depression and other things as well, but there you were with all those titles we just read, with all of this excellence. So it just struck me that you were able to maintain excellence despite all of these sort of monkeys that you had on your back. I mean, skiing was the one thing that I really, that could make me happy, you know, and that was my escape, my emotional escape, my physical escape, you know, everything that I, all of the emotions that I was going through, I really put into my skiing and I used that in so many ways as my therapy and also as a crutch. And I think that's why retiring was so hard for me because I no longer had that crutch to lean on, you know, I, I really was, was stuck with my own emotions and my own thoughts and um, sometimes being alone can be very a very scary place. So, um, you know, I, again, it was good for me to reflect and process all of that and be able to now have the skills to, to cope with everything mm -hmm. that I deal with without using skiing in, in that way. A lot of women will be able to relate to this. You have confidence at work. On the slopes, you like, I got this. A lot of women have confidence at work. But when it comes to personal relationships, it's like the confidence just evaporates. We don't know where it goes. And that same thing happened with you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like I was so much in control of my skiing career, but when it came to my personal life, I was very much a passenger. And I think I, I chose to shy away from conflict. You know, I don't, I don't like um, getting an argument, so I tend to be very passive and, and not stand up for what I want and what I need. And I think also, too, because I was so focused on skiing, I didn't know exactly what I wanted and what I needed. So um, it's been a it's been a good maturing process for me these these few years since retiring and now you know I feel like I finally really happy because I know who I am <laughs> without skiing and I know what I want and I can stand up for that. Well, I think we just read your titles. I'll just say them again: 82 World Cup wins, 20 World Cup titles, three Olympic medals, seven World Champion uh, chip medals. People would have asked you, Lindsay Vaughn, who are you? And you probably would have said skier. So today. If I were to ask the question, Lindsay Vaughn, who are you? What would your answer be? Uh, I'm just a Minnesota girl that loves to work hard. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a happy, lucky person. I'm not a skier anymore, but um, I definitely am, am a very motivated and, and uh, hardworking person. That's well, it. Eyes don't lie. Eyes don't lie, and your eyes are telling the truth. Lindsay, uh, it's a great book. A lot of people should read it. It's not really about skiing. It's about overcoming. I think it's something that all of us can use. Always great to hang with our friend, Lindsay. Coming up now, we're going to celebrate one of the stars of the show about nothing, Seinfeld, next. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic!
exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Hey guys, welcome back to Popstar Plus. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, of course, is comedy gold, an icon, and she uh, is beloved for playing Elaine on Seinfeld. We know that, and as she turns 61 tomorrow, we thought it'd be fun to dig up some Seinfeld-themed memories from our vault, and so we have to start with Uncle Al's guest appearance on Seinfeld back in 1993. Mm -hmm. It's my big break, my acting debut, a shot at stardom. Okay, so it's a couple of lines on a Seinfeld episode. I showed up early so I could get some tips. You know, what's my motivation? Am I a method actor? How should I play the scene? It's really just pretending. That's it? Yeah, that's really all there is to it. That's the secret. Yeah. All the technique and the motivation and the, the uh, you know, dredging up your prior life experience. Forget, Forget that. It. No, just pretend. Okay, Jerry's good, but let's face it, he's a comedian. Now, Jason Alexander, we're talking Tony Award winning actor here. And one thought that sh should be going through your head at all times uh -huh. please, God, don't let me screw it up. That's basically, uh, you know, if you, if you take all the acting training that I've had and you distill it down to that, that's basically what I do at every performance is, please, God, don't, don't let me screw, screw it up. up. That's it. And it's having me in good stead. So that, that you, you would recommend that? That's Just the, think, exactly true. don't let me screw I'll up. I'll tell you one other tip. Okay. If the scene is essentially over, but uh -huh. the camera's still lingering, there's going to be a moment where you don't know what to play. Uh -huh. And if you just play, who passed when? Okay. It will look something like this. It'll be... How about, uh, hey, Tom? And it's good for any situation. It covers everything, you know? It could be somebody could have said, Al, I love you. Okay, Wayne, it's yours, Wayne. How about Andy Williams? It covers everything. Well, I will personally go to Queens and deliver his Al Roker TV guide to him. What'd you do with the one you took? I don't know. I don't want to give too much away, but part of this episode's plot involves me on the cover of TV Guide. Notice the resemblance? This Hollywood stuff is fun, but hey, I'm not taking it too seriously. I'm just looking at it as a learning experience. Well, time to rehearse. I hope I remember my lines. All two of them. Elaine! Now, now you saw me rehearse. Do you think I have potential here? Or? No, I don't, Al. No, none, don't. Of, none of... None. Nothing. No, you're... You're talentless, Al. What do you really feel? You're talentless, Al. I just, I don't have a... I, there's not... You don't have a prayer. Not even go... Have a good show tonight, though. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank bye bye. Thanks Thumbs for, up for the Today Show. Thanks for the support. As we get ready to film the show, I'm starting to feel a little nervous, but I'm sure the cast feels the same way. Do, do they get nervous before they go on? Or? No, excited. Excited. Yeah, there's some excitement that happens. Excitement. Very rarely is it nervousness. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's kind of a nice rush. They don't get like a sick to their stomach feeling. Never. No. Okay. No, I think they're well beyond that. Then I guess I have the flu. And as himself, from New York, Al Roker! <laughs> and of course, our regulars, as Kramer, Michael Richards, as Elaine, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, as George, Jason Alexander. Who else can play George? It's hey. showtime. Elaine! Guess <laughs> oh, your boyfriend's gonna have to catch the next train. 
He's not my boyfriend. He's not? Interesting. <laughs> For today, I'm Al Rowe. That is so fun to watch. How amazing is Uncle Al? Finally, here's Julia speaking to us here on our home turf today, back in 1998. We begin with Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who recently told me how much she enjoyed playing Elaine. You know, I, I've been working long enough to know that all the elements don't come together like this every day. And so it's been a fabulous role. And I'm sure that there are other great roles out there. But my god, this has been sublime. I have to tell you, I love Elaine. I think she is so great. Thank and, you. Um, <laughs> I love you, Elaine. What is it about I her? I love you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. What is it about her, though, that makes her, I mean, really, don't you hear that from so many women? Men, men too, although a certain kind of man. Yeah, a um, man that you don't want to be near. I mean, what do people say to you when they talk about, about her and your character? Maybe she, she says what so many women would like to say. Maybe that's it. Yeah. You know, maybe everybody wants to say, get out and push somebody away. And because she, she does do what you wish you could do, you know. I hate that question when people say, who's your favorite interview? Because they're, all they're always going to say me. Yeah, always. <laughs> exactly. Right. And then they get their feelings hurt. Of course, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Louis right. Drive right. <laughs> but um, when you think about moments that were just great for you and your character and fun to do, and you knew it would, was really working. Oh, I've had so many moments like that because they've, I've, I've been so lucky to have the opportunity to do so many different comedic beats, so to speak. The dance was fun to do, although humiliating, but fun. Can you really dance, by the way, Elaine? I mean, Julia? <laughs> yes, I like to think that I can really dance. I don't really dance like that, if that's what you mean. You that's not my real dancing. No. <laughs> I've been actually doing the, the Elaine dance the last two days. Oh, I'd like and to I see that. I think I have it down pretty well. Well, but... I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because that has a, like, just sort of go yeah. like, no, see, you're too fluid already. <laughs> it's got to be jerky. <laughs> OK, so. And then just do that at the same time. Yeah, that's not bad. Do it a little more. So, like you're listening to music. And do, just make everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then go, uh, like that. What sort of things would you like to do next? I can't even tell you. I, I need to take a breather, you know? I've been working hard for so many years. Um, I'm not going to do television. Why um, not? Well, because I've done it, you yeah. know, and this has been so good. And I don't want to sully that, you know. I, I think that I should leave that as a sort of a treasure, treasure and just let it be. And there you go. That is some 90s nostalgia for you today. Listen, we appreciate you watching Popstar Plus today. We know you have choices in Popstar material, but thank you for choosing us tomorrow. We're going to catch up with two stars from the Netflix hit Cheer. We'll see you then. Have a great day.
Hello and thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. There's no better time to think about change than the beginning of a new year. So for the next 25 minutes, we are focusing on you, giving you a roadmap to getting your life where you want to be, from personal wishes to professional goals. And by the way, you're not alone when it comes to thinking about the year ahead. Here's what our Today family is focusing on. Professional goal would just to, to simply be to not get fired. Um, my personal goal uh, would be to maybe work a little less, spend a little bit more time with, with my children uh, because they're going up a little too fast. Well, if so, you get fired, you'll have more time. That's true. That's a good point. So maybe my professional goal should be to get fired. Win, win. Don't edit this. Don't you edit this. Those are my goals. Okay, so I hope to spend more time, just uninterrupted time, playing with my kids. So phone away on the ground, roughhousing, playing hide and seek, coloring, whatever it is, I wanna do that, which we do, but uninterrupted. Uninterrupted playtime with my kids. The habit that I want to break this new year is the phone addiction. And I had like this big epiphany last week. And I asked myself, are you happier with it or without it? And I realized I was happier without it. So it's time to put that baby away. One thing I want to work on in the upcoming year, I want to spend far less time on this wretched device. All right, personal or professional goal for 2022. The personal goal has to be, I, I've made these videos for my family before, like a collection of like the iPhone photos and videos, and my kids love it. It's been a year since I've done another one, so I'm gonna try to put them together and, and make a little film project for the family. I actually have a tiny real goal for the next year, and that is to finally, finally learn to cook something. <laughs> Why did you laugh? Do I have a, a personal goal for 2022? I guess I, I just want to just be a little more healthy. Uh, me and my wife did this Whole30 thing for 30 days, which is a great diet and cleanse, and it really changed our lives. We loved it, but we only did it for one month. So I think we're going to try to do it for, for more months in the years ahead. Professionally, uh, is uh, to be to be more loving and giving to my, my co-workers. I really hope we take Read with Jenna, which has been this really fun part of my job, the book club that we've made together and make it bigger. That's my goal. Words of inspiration for, for anybody uh, in 2022. I think, uh, you know, uh, love others as you would want to be loved. And, and I think we all might treat each other just a little bit better. Whatever the question is, love is the answer. Try to lean into love. Uh, I heard a great quote about faith this year, which has stayed with me, which is sometimes people need to see to believe, but if you believe, then you see. I just think that 2022 is going to be a good year. I'm going to knock on wood because we've said that about the last couple of years, but I feel like this year we're going to get a break. Seek out love, block out the rest, and just keep the train going 2022. Just like our Today Show family, we all have goals and aspirations for the next year, but worry and anxiety could be holding you back. That's why we have some tips to cope so you can make 2022 your best year yet. Joining us now is psychiatrist Dr. Sue Varma. Welcome, Dr. Varma. So good to see you in person. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about this because I think for a lot of us, obviously, it's been a really tough two years for the world. Absolutely. And so as we look to the new year, we need an, a mental break. How do you even go about starting to give yourself that space? Great question, Vicki. And you know, in order to give ourselves space, there's two big things that we have to do. We have to manage our time and we have to manage our outlook. And when it comes to our time, the thing that I see is that a lot a lot of people give the best part of their day away to others, whether it be checking emails first thing in the morning or taking care of the household and getting the family ready. What we really need to do is carve out time for ourselves. If it's a 20 minute do not disturb mm -hmm. sign you put on your computer, you wake up 20 minutes early to be able to spend time for yourself. You hire a babysitter so you can go to a walk for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is not a lot of time, mm -hmm. but what it says to yourself is that I'm making a commitment either to creativity, to my goals, to my productivity. It's about creating intention and purpose. The other thing I say is manage your outlook, and this is yeah. so important. A lot of times we 
always have a tendency to do the three P's of pessimism just talked about in our field. Mm. Uh, personalization, um, thinking something is permanent, and thinking something that's bad is pervasive. Mm. And for example, if your boss doesn't respond to you, you say, oh my God, it's me. Right. You personalize it. You say that this, I'm going to lose my job. You we catastrophize. Things will never get better. Mm -hmm. And the outlook, the, the answer to that is reframe. So say to yourself, what would you say to a friend? You would say to a friend, this is circumscribed. Your boss is probably dealing with a lot. It's right. not you. Yeah. So if you're able to say, what would you say to somebody else, or would this bother you five, five years from now? Probably not, then let it go. We hear so much about how important meditation is, and I think it's something that we, they call it the practice for a reason, because you have to do it over and over to kind of get more accustomed to it. But you say there are also some alternatives. If meditation is too hard for you, what else can you do? Yes, so meditation helps us be mindful. It helps us be present. So I would say if, if meditation is too much, because a lot of people say it's too anxiety provoking, I'm left alone with my thoughts, I don't want that. Mm. I would say just be present. If you're talking to somebody, don't do anything else. Don't check yeah. your phone. Single mindedness, single focus, so that that's very helpful. The other thing I would say is progressive muscle relaxation. Now, I don't know if you'd be up for trying this with me. Sure, time. yeah, okay. always. So basically, you're closing your eyes and you're okay. settling down in your chair. And the idea is that you're going to tense and relax muscle group by muscle group. Mm. So Vicky, I just want you to settle in your chair, tense your fists really, really tight, 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 and then you let release. And I want you to tense again, tight, 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 and release. And then next you do your shoulders, you tense them really, really tight, bring them up to your ears and then you release. Bring your shoulders up to your ears, and then you release. Oh, and Yeah, I can feel the difference in my body. Yes. No and, question about it. And the idea is that we live constantly in a state of tension where we're like this all the time. Right. And the idea is that you want to do this intentionally. You need to unclench. Yes, yes, yes. to tense okay. and then release. And okay. you do this muscle group by muscle group. And this induces what we call the relaxation response. It induces the vagal nerve, the parasympathetic, the slow, and calming hormone in our body. Yeah, because we know the body has such an effect on the mind. So if it's hard for you to quiet yourself and get those thoughts in order, try to do something physical that yes. can have an effect. Yes. I love that. So a lot of people, let's talk about work. People are anxious about going back to work. You know, how do you tackle that anxiety uh, about things that you can't control? Yes, and that's such a great point that you're bringing up things that you cannot control. So I'm a big believer in productive worry versus unproductive worry. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if you can keep a worry journal, right? So the worry journal, the idea is I want you to spend 10 minutes a day worrying about everything you can possibly imagine. And what studies have shown is that 85% of the time, the things that we worry about never actually happen. And the 15% of the time that they do, we're better equipped to handle it than wow. we gave ourselves credit for. So productive worry is what can you do? Make a list. What do I need to do for my job? Is it my outfits that I need to try on the day before? Is it meal prep? Is it taking lunch with me? Is it masks and hand sanitizers? Mm -hmm. Is it knowing the commuting, the commuter schedule? Is it having childcare? So those are the things you have control over and that's very important for us to exercise control because we have lost a lot of that. We've been stripped away of control, of agency and we want to bring that back. So do what you can for the productive aspect and the unproductive, that's where the worry comes in. Just write everything down. Say that stat for me one more time. What was the percentage of things that actually occur that you worry about? 15% of the time. And what's the time that we spend worrying about this? 85% of the time. Wow, okay, that's dramatic. Last question really quickly, sleep. Obviously we can all use more sleep. Quality sleep helps our immune system. It helps in so many ways. What tips do you have there for us to get a good night's rest? Yes, so good mental hygiene uh, and mental sleep and, and sleep begins in the morning. So I would say it's really important that in the morning get in 20 minutes of daytime sunlight shut the blue light, shut the devices down an hour before bedtime and do a 60 second deep breathing exercise. And don't forget the worry journal because a lot of times we have problems sleeping is because of all the things we're worrying about mm -hmm. during the day. Get that out of your mind, cleanse, purge in the worry diary. I love it, Dr. Varma. So many good tips in that chunk. Thank you so much, great to see you. Thank you so much. All right, well, if a focus on fitness, nutrition and being all around healthier is your hope for 2022, we have the tools to support you on your personal journey. Plus, if the road to a better you means minimizing a mess, yes, that's me. We have the tips to organize everything from your workspace to your closet. A lot more when Consumer Confidential returns. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. 
in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Ooh, the answer's Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. If a focus on living happier and healthier is your goal for the new year, health and fitness expert Stephanie Mansour is here to show you some simple things you can do without spending a fortune, and that's so important. Welcome, Stephanie. So good to see you in person. Thank you. All right, so when it comes to health and fitness, I know it can be really overwhelming for folks to just even start a routine. So what's your advice for just getting over that hump, taking that first step? Yes, so many of my clients that are focusing on weight loss and getting healthier are successful, and they're used to having big lofty goals and then achieving them. However, when it comes to our own health and wellness, Vicki, we really want to reduce those goals. So instead of having a goal to work out for 50 minutes a day, every single day this week, I actually want you to go on a three-day spree. Okay. So this three-day spree is just five minutes a day of movement. Mm -hmm. So whether that's a walk around the block, whether that's playing your favorite song in your house and dancing around yes. and playing it on repeat for five minutes, or you can even go into the kitchen and do 10 squats, 10 push-ups at the counter, 10 side ab exercises. You don't have to get down on the ground. Right. Or you can even do five minutes of stretching in bed in the morning before you get out. Just commit to be fit for five minutes a day, three days at a time. I love that. I think that is bite size. It's totally workable. And I think when you think the length of two songs is yeah. five minutes, you can do it if you pick two of your favorite songs. Yeah, exactly. And you can do it anywhere. I like how you're like, you don't even have to get on the ground. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think this is one of the best trends to come out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. which is working out from home. People yes. have gotten used to it. They were forced to do it. And now they really love it. But even with that extra time that we have, since a lot of people aren't commuting anymore, mm -hmm. it still seems hard to like pack it in because you fill it with work or you fill it with other things. Right. So what do you say to carve out that time? Yeah, you know, people are cleaning their toilet bowls instead of working out. I mean, yeah. that's how much people are delaying exercise. So what we really want to do is get to the root of this. Mm -hmm. So what is your big reason why? Why do you want to work out? Why do you want to commit to being fit? Why do you deserve to feel better in your body and to feel more empowered about making healthier choices for yourselves? Mm -hmm. So really get to the nitty gritty of what's your big reason why, mm -hmm. and then start to look at your day and see how you can fit in exercise. So everyone's brushing their teeth in the morning and at night. Let's do some squats. Let's mm -hmm. do some leg lifts. Let's do some calf raises. Or if you're sitting at your desk at work, let's do some shoulder rolls. Like Here that. we can. Yeah. yeah. Loosen up the traps, the neck tension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. It feels great. <laughs> I know. You can also drop one ear to the opposite shoulder. Feel a stretch here for yes. a few breaths. You can do that while you're doing emails, yeah. while you're on work calls. Oh my gosh. Definitely. You can even turn your camera off on Zoom and do this mm -hmm. while you're on video calls. But really just fitting in these little movements throughout the day right. is going to retrain your 
your brain to fit this in. And you said five minutes for three days a week. It's so doable. What nice. about when you hit a roadblock, right? You, yes. you get started, but then it's the holidays and you feel bad because you've eaten horribly for four days straight yes. or, or longer. <laughs> what do you do to get back on track? I always encourage my clients to use my 50% rule. Okay. So if your goal was 10,000 steps a day, cut that in half. 50%, your goal is now 5,000 steps a day. Really use this even if you're focusing on healthy eating. If you mm -hmm. want to fit in five fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. a day, cut that in half. Only okay. focus on two to three. Okay. So take this 50% rule and apply it whenever you're in a stressful situation of your life or whenever it's the holidays. Use that 50% rule to let yourself off the hook. Got it. But still, success breeds success. So when you hit that goal, you're going to be more motivated tomorrow to repeat and do it again. So 50% to, to try to help you build back that momentum. Exactly. I like that. That's good, giving yourself that break. Yes. What about food? So we have yeah. a couple of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches yes. that you yes. got. Right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh. Well, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, like there's two options, right? Like we have the normal peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but then we also have one that looks exactly identical. And I snuck flax seeds into that. Oh. So that's a healthy fat. So you want to think of ways that you can add in nutrients. Now, when we're talking about smoothies, mm -hmm. you have two smoothies right. that probably look identical. At least they do when I make them. But when I make one of them, I add in spinach. I love so it. a handful of spinach, it's, it's going to help you and with you weight loss. It. You don't taste it. You hardly see it. So I really preach, you know, add in. Don't right. take out. I it's unrealistic that. to cut out sugar completely or for a lot of people to cut out alcohol completely. Mm -hmm. So think about ways that you can add in nutrients. Food is fuel. Right. So that's how we want to look at it rather than the, all the list of things we need to deprive ourselves of. What snacks are always on your go-to list? Yes. So an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but only if you add protein to yeah. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so an apple is an insufficient snack because it's sugar and carbs, which are healthy but it's going to cause your blood sugar levels to spike mm. up and then you're going to drop and crave more and mm -hmm. spike up. So if you're an emotional eater or if you're someone that overeats at holiday meals, mm -hmm. you want to add protein. So okay. an apple with almond butter or with a handful of nuts, carrots with hummus uh -huh. or Greek yogurt. And my personal favorite to grab when I'm on the go yeah. is a hard boiled egg and a handful of raspberries. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I protein them, but yeah. with a fruit or a vegetable. And raspberries are really high in fiber. Yes, I like to add in because yes. nobody likes to take away. I know. You just keep adding the vegetables, it helps you feel fuller too. Exactly. And it's good for you with all the vitamins and stuff. Yes. All right, so let's talk about apps because a lot of people want apps to support them, you know, in their fitness journey. Yes. One of my friends talked about this one where it, it doesn't tell you a number for how you weigh, it just gives you colors. Yeah. So you're like, if you're in the green zone, you're feeling good, or you know, the black zone, I don't know exactly, but I yeah. thought that was really interesting because it makes you not focused on a metric, but right. it just gives you zones. Yes. So what apps do you recommend? Exactly, I love that, Vicki. And you know, I've actually been inspired to create an app myself yeah. because so many people are asking for apps. Mm -hmm. And I love apps when you focus on, on what it is that you're trying to get from the app. So if you are someone who's into those metrics and those numbers, and you're focusing on food, get an app that focuses on, you know, calories or macros mm -hmm. or where you can scan the bar label. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone that's focused on workouts, then you want to find an app that's heavily focused on exercising. Okay. And finally, if mindset is your issue, if you know what to do, but you're just not doing it, you want to find an all-inclusive app that's going to help send you those reminders or maybe, you know, do the zones like you mentioned and colors. So really, you know, make you relaxed about your health and fitness rather than feeling like you have to do every single thing right. Right. And I also want to encourage people, you know, free trials are mm -hmm. key. Yes. So, so test try it things out. out. Yes. And pricing does not necessarily dictate quality. So I love apps that are in the $9.99 to $14.99 range. Okay. Don't feel like you need a to year? commit. Uh, a a month, month. A month. A month. Yeah. Don't feel like you need to commit Got to it. a larger number just okay. for it to be a better app. And what's the name of your app? Step It Up with Steph. All right. Thank and I'm you. Steph, as yeah, you know. That's right. <laughs> Stephanie Mansour here with us in the flesh. Thank you so much. Great Thank to see you. Thank you, Vicki. All right. Well, from health and fitness goals, to professional aspirations. Whether you're looking for a new job, that big promotion, or an entire career change, figuring out the best moves to land your next big gig can really be a maze. Luckily, Katherine Patterson, career coach and TikTok influencer with over 20 years of engineering and recruiting experience, she's here to share her insight and help you reach your professional goals in 2022. Katherine, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, Catherine, the pandemic, it certainly has a lot of people rethinking their jobs. Some people thinking it might be time for a career change. So what's the first step? How do you start navigating that job search? 
after the pandemic, everyone was just so rearing to just get into um, a new career. And I'll tell you what, right now is the best time. The job market has never been better. We're at four point, a little over 4% unemployment rate. Most people, they're going to look for their job title, right? For example, let's say software engineer or office manager. I don't necessarily would do, I wouldn't do that. Mm. I would search for your skills. Look for the skills because I'll tell you what, you might be surprised at what comes about. So Catherine, That's start that search, not with the job title necessarily, but with the skills yeah. or things that you have that you want to use in that next job. That's great advice. Absolutely. What about social media? What are some ways that you can use social media in your job search? So with social media, we should break down those two words, right? Social and media. Social people and then media images, right? It goes beyond your resume. Your resume is just going to be a document, just text. So with social media, what you can do, like your LinkedIn profile, you can take advantage of the, all that space. People forget that your LinkedIn profile is searchable. Mm -hmm. So utilize all of that opportunity like an ad, like a commercial. You can use keyword optimization. Those uh, recruiters out there, they have automated alerts. So when you update your LinkedIn page, for example, they will get alerts mm. that trigger them to go find you. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah. When it comes oh, yeah. to the actual resume and you mentioned updating your resume, doing those things to trigger alerts, but talk about the format. How should you format that resume? And also what are some red flags, things you should not have on your resume? Oh boy. Oh gosh. Okay. So a lot of these companies out there, especially the Fortune 500s, they have very sophisticated systems because there's uh, only a few of those recruiters and millions of you guys, right, of the job seekers of us. Um, so definitely no pictures. And I don't know if any, any one of us are doing that anymore. They, they're not machine readable. Mm. So definitely keep it boring. Keep it simple and, you know, straightforward. Another thing is dollars and numbers. When I see dollars and numbers on a resume, like how much money you made or saved for your last employer, that's that just sings to me, right? It goes mm -hmm. to the top of my pile. Okay. They love it. Okay. That's really important. So those two things are powerful on a resume. Great hacks. Thank you, Catherine Patterson. No, really all. appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you. All right, cut the clutter, the phrase to help you minimize the mess from your desk to your closet when Consumer Confidential returns. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community?
The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. In the last year and a half, we have probably spent more time at home than ever, and it's very easy for our spaces to go from clean to cluttered in a flash, especially if you're working from home. But there are some simple things you can do to help minimize the mess, and here with me is lifestyle expert Maureen Petrosky, and she's going to help us stay organized all year long, which I love for 2022. That's one of my goals. So let's talk first about our virtual desktops, right? For a lot of us, we're on our screens all day, so what can we do there to make it seem kind of less cluttered visually? on our virtual desktop. The very first thing that most people do is pick up their phone in the morning. Yeah. So if you pick up your phone and your phone is cluttered, you're already starting with a mind full of mess. Ah. So what we want to do is folders are your friends. On your phones, use your folders. If you can't see those apps, you're not going to use those apps. So put them into folders where you know where they're going to be. And then in your email, when it comes to email, we all have tons of email. The rule of thumb with email is just like clothes. If you haven't worn it in a year, get rid of it. So you can reorganize your email by oldest to newest okay. and just click, 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 click. To delete, delete all them. the old ones? I know it sounds scary, but I promise you it feels so good. Okay. I love it. I'm not one of those like get it down to zero people. I know there are people who don't want to see any like new, I can't do that yet. I understand yet, that. It doesn't have to hard. be zero, Okay, but it shouldn't be older Over than, than a year. year. Okay. I like that. That's an easy rule. All right. We, let's talk about physical desks. Yes. That's an area of actual physical visual clutter for a lot of folks. Right. How do you organize your workspaces in real Life. We have a cute little pile here, but normally on people's desks, there's lots of piles. <laughs> yes. So this is a spot where you might want to invest in something and get a cute little desktop organizer okay. like we have here. So again, you can actually see the items that you need to get through yeah. on your desk. Piles are bad. And again, piles are bad, but drawers that are full of stuff is just mm-hmm. as bad. So if you can't see your items, like okay. here, this is just a cute little organizer. Both of these things under $20. Yeah. Small investment will last you the whole year long. I do like that because you can put your mail in one thing, a bills, and then right. like junk mail in another. In going, it. outgoing. It's a yeah. little bit of organization that will sustain you the whole year long. Anything to get rid of the piles. I love that. Okay. What about um, things that you, you like to say, if you can't see it, you don't need it. So you That's talked right. about email. You talked about physical mail. Closets is another spot, a trouble spot for some of us, especially with clothes being, you know, messy everywhere. So what is your right. tip when and it comes you, to organizing those spaces? If you can't see it, you won't wear it either. Right, that's so true. How many times, Vicky, have you gotten ready to go out and before you're out the door, most of your closet is on the floor? Yeah, it happens. Or on your bed or somewhere mm-hmm. cluttering your, your bedroom. Well, I've got two really great tips for that. First is a dress rehearsal. Mm-hmm. If you know you've got a big event coming up, you're going out Friday night or maybe a job interview, try on your outfit before, well before you're actually going to need it. That's going to save you from ripping through and tearing through. Got it. To make sure it fits, it looks the make way sure you it want. Fits. That's yeah, okay. so important to make sure it fits. Make sure it's appropriate for the weather. Yes. You might think you're going to wear something and the weather might change. Check the weather on your phone. Now you've got That's it so in a, true. an app that you can see. Yeah. And then you're going to know that it fits you and it's going to save a lot of stress. Okay. The next thing is to color code your closet. You'll see here we've got our closet rack. Love this. But when you have your blues, your reds, your black, white mm-hmm. all together, you know if you're looking for that red dress, it's going to be right where it's supposed to be. You know <laughs> what? Enlist your kids to help you too because they love doing this. My daughters love to put all my stuff in color-coded order and then it takes like some of the stress off and of you. This is worth the time to do it, it because it, really it saves is. you stress, it saves you time then getting dressed and it minimizes the mess then for the rest of the year. And it's visually so pleasing. It's so nice. You'll see even here I just got the same color hangers. Yeah. So if you, that's another small investment okay. at any home store, get rid of all those mismatched messy hangers. You get all the same hangers, put all your clothes in color coordination. The French have a saying, it's called mise en place. Uh It's everything in its place and a place for everything. And that's what we've done here. They talk about that with cooking, but it works in other areas to organize your life. It is from cooking. You're right. Okay. The hardest part, I think, for a lot of us to organize, mementos, things that you've collected over time, things that have been handed down to you from your family. What do you do about that? Because I feel like the first thing a lot of organizers sell us is purge, but it's hard to get rid of it sentimental hard to get things. Rid of things. So in the kitchen is a spot where we end up with lots of multiples of things. Mm-hmm. So first of all, we'll talk about the next generation. I've got tons of whisk, tons of spatulas, strange items that you might not use anymore, mismatched glassware. This is the perfect time to put together that gift package for Mm -hmm. maybe someone in your family or someone you know who just got their first apartment or a 
a new grad that's looking yes. to go out on their own, share the items. So keep them in the family, but share them. And then those sentimental items like you mentioned, like a cake dish or a candy dish or a serving dish that you know you are not going to use. If you are not the entertainer, if you just keep moving these things around or putting things in around them, shoving them back to the time to cupboard. give them a new life. Mm. Give them to someone who will love them. Give them a new life and minimize the mess in your life. Whoever gave it to you will be happy to know that. That's true. And I like how you collected them all because when you put them all together, you realize I don't need seven <laughs> spatulas you or do not six need cutting seven boards spatulas. or whatever, exactly. right? Okay. These are fantastic tips. Thank you, Maureen. Always good to see you. So nice to see you too. All right. Well, that is all the time we have today. I'm Vicki Wynn. Thanks for hanging out with me on Consumer Confidential. We'll see you next time. today all day. Next on Saucy, Anthony Contrino is whipping up three dishes any true lover of Italian food should never live without. First up, he's making a classic creamy risotto. Then it's a super easy red sauce. And finally, an irresistibly crispy arancini. Oh, this rice is nice. I love risotto. It can be a bit time consuming to make, but it's actually quite easy and it always impresses. You can make risotto even tastier by deep frying it. I like to transform it into one of Sicily's most popular street foods, arancini. These OG rice bowls can be found pretty much everywhere in the region where my gram comes from, Palermo. Today, I'm making a classic creamy risotto. I'll use the leftovers to make my irresistible arancini that I love to serve over my no-fail everyday tomato sauce. For cocktail hour, it's another taste of Sicily my blood orange and white wine coolers that are sure to be the hit at your next summer party. Risotto is something that I think that everyone should learn how to make. And it's a technique that's quite simple to master. Now you can add any flavor that you'd like to it. Mushrooms are super traditional. I like to fold in some roasted butternut squash in the fall a fresh zesting of lemon for a delicious risotto al limone, or if you're feeling super bougie, you can shave some fresh black or white truffle on top. I like to keep it simple with this base to really let the flavors of white wine and Parmigiano Reggiano really shine through. The first thing you need to do is warm some stock. We're gonna need this a little later on in the process, but we want it to be ready. We're not looking for it to be simmering, just stay nice and warm. In the meantime, we can get the rest of our ingredients all set. I have two small shallots, but you can use one large instead. I go this way and then the opposite direction. I'll just give my knife a quick run over just to make sure I didn't miss a piece or two, but Kinda nailed it. Set that aside. And a couple of cloves of garlic. Oh God, where did we get this garlic from? Peeled garlic from now on. We wanna mince this up as well. I have the rest of my ingredients ready to go. So all that's left for me to do is just open up this bottle of white wine. A good dry white wine will do here. Like I've said in the past, something that you would drink. I'm using a nice Pinot Grigio. Make sure you go deep enough. There's nothing worse than breaking a cork. Ta-da. We'll just set that aside. Time to start cooking. I'm gonna put this pan over a medium heat, and to that, we will add some butter. Just one tablespoon for a little extra flavor. And then two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Give it a swirl, get that butter melted. Then we can add our 
shallots. Looks like a lot, right? We're not looking to get any color on these shallots just to soften them. So we're literally just going to saute these for a couple of minutes, two to three. Time to add our garlic. Just wanna cook this garlic for a minute, just until it's fragrant. It's fragrant. Then our rice. One cup right into our pan. We want to toast this rice a little before we start adding the liquid to cook it. I'm using cotnaroli rice. It is considered the king of Italian rices. It has a lot of starch in it, which is going to add to the creaminess, and it also cooks to a beautiful al dente. I think this guy is getting thirsty. Time to add a half a cup of wine. Looks about right. Now this is where the technique really kicks in. Over this medium, medium low heat, you want to keep stirring constantly until there's almost no liquid left. Like right now, before you start adding your warm broth, just a little bit at a time, about a ladle full at a time. And keep stirring and repeating the process. The reason we're adding warm stock is because we don't want to halt the cooking of our rice. What makes risotto so creamy is, unlike pasta, where you strain the water, you're keeping everything, all those starches remain in the pan and it just keeps getting thicker and creamier and delicious. I'm way too passionate about risotto. <laughs> you see how all of my liquid is almost gone? I'm actually gonna lower this heat a little bit and add another ladleful of our stock. Just keep stirring, adding liquid as needed. And this is probably gonna take about 40, 45 minutes. And do note, you might not need all of the broth. It's better to have too much than too little. Look how creamy. It's like the parting of the seas. It takes a really long time for it to sort of come back together. I'm gonna get my last couple of ingredients on standby so it's ready to go. Okay, I think we can add our cheese. Half a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. The good stuff, the real stuff. and a quarter cup of my secret ingredient. Looks about right. Mascarpone cheese. As if this wasn't creamy enough, this is gonna put it over the top. You can see how creamy it is. It's almost like rice pudding. It's so creamy and decadent that you don't need that much of it. Then to finish it off, simply a drizzle of really good olive oil, just a couple of cracks of fresh black pepper, and of course, just a little bit more Parmigiano Reggiano. Or a lot of it more. Buon appetito. Perfection. So good, so creamy, so delicious. Don't worry, these leftovers are not gonna go to waste. Never in my house. While it's still warm, I'm gonna transfer it to a sheet pan, 
spread it out nice and thin, let it come to room temperature, then we'll cover it and get it in the fridge to chill so that we can make the crispiest, the creamiest arancini you've ever had. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is the For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I always serve my arancini with a tomato sauce, and my family's been making this forever. Once a month, my parents would make a vat of it so that we always had it on hand, even packing it and freezing it up just to bring on vacation with us. God forbid we couldn't have sauce on a Sunday when we were in Florida. This sauce uses just a few staple ingredients, at least staple ingredients in my house, and comes together fairly quickly. First up, a sweet onion. It adds a little bit of sweetness and balances out the acidity of the tomatoes. Any sweet onion will do. I feel like my gram had this sauce going within minutes and it would just be simmering away and we would be in the kitchen trying to like sneak a dip of bread into it before we got yelled at. I'm gonna get this into my pot, get it out of my way. A nice healthy amount of garlic, five cloves, Thankfully, I have some left over from my risotto. And just thinly slice it. Obviously, I love garlic. And that's gonna go in at this point as well. Next up, extra virgin olive oil, about a third of a cup. Okay, let's put this over medium heat and start to saute that garlic and onion. This is definitely one of my favorite smells in the world. It means that somebody's cooking up something delicious. We want these onions to get nice, soft, translucent, but not take on any color. Just stir it pretty frequently, just so that you can make sure they don't burn. Okay, these are looking perfect. Time to add our tomatoes. I have three 28 ounce cans of what were Palati whole peel tomatoes that I pureed in a blender. And we're gonna throw that right into our pot.
Going to give this a stir and add our last few ingredients. We'll add a teaspoon and a half of salt. We'll go back later and make sure that doesn't need any more. Some fresh black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of dried oregano. And a pinch of red pepper flakes. If you like a spicier sauce, of course, add more. And then basil. Decent bit of basil. About a quarter of a cup, which basically means this whole plant. And stems are fine. Kind of a sad looking plant. Right on in. The basil is just so aromatic. And in my opinion, that's what makes a really good tomato sauce is the basil flavor that's infused and permeated throughout this whole sauce. At this point, you want to bring your sauce to a boil, then immediately reduce it to a simmer, stirring every 10 to 15 minutes until it's thick, all the flavors have come together, and it's ready to be served. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today shows newest fan. Little Al Roker. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Ooh, the answer's calling, you need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the moment. Little Al Roker. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I've never met a rice bowl that I don't like, but these are truly the best. It has everything going on. It's creamy, it's cheesy, and has a crispy exterior. They're not your typical traditional Sicilian rice balls or arancini. I like them to be on the smaller side. They're a little bit more elegant and perfect for a cocktail party. The first thing that I need to do is set up a dredging station. I don't always use flour, but this is one of those times when I do, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So about three quarters of a cup. Up next, a couple of eggs. Whisk those up real well. And finally, some panko. I've tried it both ways with standard breadcrumb and panko. This is the way to get the perfect crispy exterior. So about a cup and a half of that. Now that our dredging station is complete, on to the cheesy part. I have some fresh mozzarella. These are called ciliegine because they are the size of a ciliegine cherry. 
Gonna need 12 for this recipe. And I'm just taking them out of their liquid and placing them on a paper towel. I wanna get these nice and dry so that we can wrap them in the risotto and it's not too slippery. I have my chilled risotto from earlier. It's nice, firm, and set. Feels a little weird, but it's exactly what we want it to be. We want it to be pliable so that we can shape it around our ciliegine. I'm taking a two tablespoon cookie scoop or measure, it's one ounce, and scraping up some of our risotto. Don't worry if you rip the parchment that's underneath, just make sure it doesn't wind up in your risotto mixture here. That is not the crunch we're looking for. Press it in, make sure you're getting the full two tablespoons. My stomach is growling. Oops. Last one. Okay, now for the fun part. We're going to wrap our ciliegine inside our risotto. Take one of your mozzarella balls and slowly shape the chilled risotto around to enclose it. Takes a little patience. Give it a little roll. Don't worry about making a perfect circle at this point. We will refine the shape later on after we dredge them. Cute. Now keep going. Take your time. It's really important that the cheese is in the center of your risotto so that when you fry them, it doesn't leak out. It's a little sticky, but that's what's helping to keep everything all together. I like my arancini on the small side because of the cheese to risotto ratio. But traditionally in Sicily, they're much larger, pear-shaped or orange-shaped, hence arancini, and are often filled with meat sauce, with peas or prosciutto. Last one. Okay, that just about does it. At this point, wash your hands. You definitely wanna start with clean, dry hands for the dredging process. That's all there is to it. This size is the perfect size for a cocktail party. And then you don't have to feel so guilty when you eat three or four of them. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna give my hands a quick rinse, make a little room so that we can fry these bad boys up. I have a high-sided skillet filled with a generous amount of vegetable oil. You want there to be enough oil for the balls to be completely submerged. We're looking for a deep fry, not a shallow fry. Be careful. Cook them in batches of about four, just so that you can control the temperature of your oil. in about five minutes, and these are looking great. They're beautiful golden brown. And I know that that cheese inside is nice and gooey. Right onto our paper towel lined sheet pan and immediately crush up some sea salt right on top so that it melts from that hot oil and just gives a little bit of extra seasoning to our arancini. Don't they look great? Beautiful. Our arancini are beautiful golden brown. They're nice and hot just the way they need to be served. Let's get it plated up. I'm gonna go with a fairly simple presentation. Just a generous puddle 
of my everyday tomato sauce right in the center of a plate, just like that. And then I think three is a very nice and generous portion for our arancini. A little extra cheese never hurt anyone. And last but not least, if you can find it, some micro basil. You can use regular basil. If you haven't figured out by now, I'm just over the top and bougie. Look how beautiful this looks. It's like the Italian flag on a plate. These arancini make the perfect appetizer for cocktail hour. And I have the perfect drink to mix up. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. When blood oranges are in season, I can't wait to get my hands on them and use them for as many things as possible. Like this blood orange and white wine cooler. This is not the stuff you were sneaking behind your parents back in high school. It's a little bougier than that. This blood orange is doing double duty. Half of it's gonna go into our cocktail to help flavor it, and the other half is gonna be a beautiful garnish at the end. So cut one half into wedges. And you can throw this into a cocktail mixer or a cocktail shaker, whatever you have. The other half I'll have again, and then just slice into half moons. Look how beautiful, deep, vibrant red that is. Super delicious, and it's also very nutritious. You're also going to need a half of a lime. Save the other half for something later. Cut that into a few wedges as well. Then a little rosemary, about two sprigs. Add that and muddle it up. Put some elbow strength into it. We want to get all of those citrus juices out and the oils and fragrance of that rosemary, which I can smell already. Look at that beautiful fuchsia color. Okay, to that, one cup of our Pinot Grigio. Stir it up. and then strain it into two glasses. One cocktail for now, and then one for right after. <laughs> Isn't that a gorgeous color? Then to amplify our blood orange flavor, some blood orange soda. Half a cup to each of your glasses. All that's missing 
are some garnishes. Throw a couple, a few of those half moons into your glasses. Any way they fall. Some more rosemary. I have one last surprise. It is summer after all, so some edible flowers. You can find these in the produce section of your supermarket. Mm, that'll do. I don't know about you, but I think this is one gorgeous cocktail. It also happens to be extremely delicious. Mm. This is not your average wine cooler. Cheers. Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post and I Know Trends. Each week I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick, and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day, January Reset. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Happy New Year, everyone. You know the saying, New Year, New You. Well, it's true. For many January is about resolutions and resets, and we have you covered. From the latest kicks making their mark all over social media, to must-have elevated everyday items that will add ease to your routine, whether your new goals are in the kitchen or the gym. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Let's start with beauty in the new year. So this bestseller from Kiehl's can help give your under eye a new lease in 2022. This is their creamy avocado eye treatment and all I can say is thank you. It may be small in size, but it sure packs a big hydrating punch. It is just so creamy and so rich. And it's really perfect for this time of year when we're all combating drier skin. And what I love about it is it has ingredients like avocado oil and beta carotene and even shea butter. So there's a lot to love with this little Kiehl's eye treatment. Next, it's winter, and we know the feeling of dry hands. So if giving your nails a little TLC is part of your list of beauty resolutions, this cuticle oil is for you. So it's called the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, and it's actually made with cold-pressed oils and vitamins that is designed to lend and help give intense hydration to your cuticles and your nails, whether they're brittle or cracking or just super dry. But one of my favorite things about this cuticle oil is that you can also use it on your skin. And we're washing our hands all the time these days, so that's really helpful. Now, I am really excited about this next one, which I've personally tried. I mean, talk about an easy skin upgrade for the new year. This is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF 50, and this is a multitasking cult favorite wonder. And it's essentially a tinted moisturizer, or I guess you could call it even a moisturizing foundation. And I've always really been excited about the idea of a tinted moisturizer, but I've never really been able to find one that had the right amount of coverage. So when I tried this little CC Plus cream, I cannot tell you. It was like a eureka moment. It gave me almost instantaneous full coverage, but it felt really, really light. And it didn't look like I was wearing a ton of makeup. Also, it comes in 12 different shades. 
Okay, New Balance has once again taken the sneaker world by storm with one of the hottest, most talked about sneaker designs of the past two years. Sneaker fans, meet the New Balance 327 and it is seriously stylish. It actually launched on the runways in Paris. And what people are loving so much about this sneaker is its retro style. It's got a total 70s vibe. But what's so cool about it is it's made with high-tech materials. So you're getting that retro vibe and modern day comfort. It's angular. It's got great suede details. I love the sole. It's pretty much a platform and who doesn't like a little lift? And I think one of my favorite things about the 327 is all the great colors. Today we've got this bold orange with the forest green logo, this lavender with the metallic silver, and these purple, which really to me look like very Perry, which is the Pantone color of the year for 2022. Now, this next one is something that I hadn't seen before. It's an exciting new take on the puffer, and you're gonna wanna add this to your winter uniform this year. It's from Old Navy, and it's called the Packable Half Zip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket. First of all, it can do a really cool party trick, which I'll show you in a minute. This material is so warm, it's so light, it's not bulky, and I am so jazzed about the silhouette. It's oversized, which we're seeing so much of now. It's got the great drop shoulder and it's long. It really hits at a flattering place on the hip. Plus, it's got the high-low hem longer in the back. So this gives you a little bit more coverage. It looks great with leggings. And it's really versatile. You can easily layer this. Now, let me show you the party trick that I mentioned. See this little pocket here? This entire jacket can fold down and fit into this little pocket. So it's packable. So you can throw it in your bag and go. It's great for travel. It'll fit in your suitcase. This is a really cool jacket. Now, another useful cold weather piece to invest in this new year, the puffer vest. Layer it, live in it, or just love it. You'll wanna wear this versatile down vest from Land's End every chance you get. Talk about an affordable upgrade. I cannot get over the price on this one. And this little vest has style and substance. Let's talk about these bold colors. They are so on trend. I don't know which one I like best. Plus, these are actually really flattering and they have a couple of cool features. First of all, they're tailored. But secondly, they have this shape enhancing stitching. So see this stitching here? They kind of look like rectangles. That's called baffling. So if you notice on the front, it is a wider baffling. On the side, the stitching and the baffling is more narrow. So it gives this slimming optical illusion. So we talked about the style, now let's talk about the substance. These babies are made with genuine 600 fill power down. So that means weightless warmth. Yep, three cheers for these little puffer vests. They really do elevate the everyday. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my all-time favorite solutions to looking cool while staying comfy, the sweat set. So let me tell you what I love about the set. So each of these are fantastic in their own right. We've got a crew neck top with a sort of oversized silhouette. It's cropped, it's flattering. We've got the new high-waisted jogger, but when you put these two together, you get an outfit. Suddenly, you've got instant elevation. It looks so stylish. It even almost looks like a jumpsuit. And what I love so much about this is we're still super comfy. We're still wearing sweats, but it kind of doesn't look like it. And these crew necks and joggers are so incredibly soft. They're made out of a French terry, and Gap has even used this great washing technique that makes these feel like they're vintage or well-loved. So when you put them on for the first time, they kind of feel like you're already wearing your favorite pair of sweats. So I'm really loving all the fun fashion-forward colors. 
and I can't wait to get in my sweat set <laughs> and enjoy 2022. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment, the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF, the New Balance 327 Sneakers, the Old Navy Packable Half Sip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket, the Lands In Puffer Vest, and the Gap Sweat Test. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Lobu is talking to trend expert Brittany Levine about her favorite items to stock up on for the new year. And later, Jen Fallick tackles more must-haves, whether your resolutions involve the kitchen or the gym. Don't go away. Today shows newest fan. This is the moment. Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? This is your moment. Your moment. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and that must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. And today's show is all about kicking off the new year with a reset. Style and trend expert Brittany Levine is here to help us start 2022 right. Brittany, it's so good to see you. Did you have a good holiday? Yes, it's so good to see you too, Mako. It was wonderful, well rested, and now I'm ready to dive into January and everything that that means, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, before we get into January reset, let's talk about the fact that you have this adorable baby boy. Did you enjoy the holidays? Did you do anything special? Yes, well, we were able to go down and get a little warm weather with him, and it was just great to spend the time with family and just have everyone around being healthy and safe, so that was really cool. Did you have a good holiday, too? I did. It was really nice to be with family, just like you. So because this is all about the January reset, Brittany, I'm just curious to know, do you have any specific traditions 
that you had at the top of the year. I do like to do some things in terms of resetting, you know, my meal prep. I like to start really doing clean eating and then also trying to get as organized as possible because I feel like when you are organized and things are all settled around you, you work harder, you do better. So that for me, it's like little things that help me get more done along the way. So let's start with the first item. This was great. Tell me all about them. Well, you know how when you are taking your vitamins and your supplements, they're in these really ugly packages and they hurt your hands. But what Mumi has done, this company, is created these color-coded packages here that are by day. So you have every day of the week in a specific color, you put your vitamins and supplements in there and you throw them in your bag and they're airtight, they're really perfect to keep everything nice and clean. And I just love these because it keeps them all together. It keeps them organized. And that way, you know exactly what you're supposed to be taking on yes. each day. And this is all from Moomi Design. They have some great pill pouches in larger sizes and smaller ones too. Okay, let's move on to the next item. One of the things I love to do during the course of the year is get my nails done, but it's expensive to go to the salon and so time consuming and you've got this great solution. So tell me about the Manny Rescue Kit. Yes, okay, so this is from Gloss Lab. They created their proprietary kits here that really are aimed to just save every issue that you have with your nails. This is a Manny Rescue Kit. So if you have a chip, if you need a little bit extra polish, if you need to smooth something out, they have everything in that kit there for you that just comes in these cute little pouches. So again, something easy to just reset, throw in your bag and go all from Gloss Lab. How adorable is this? Like one of my goals for this year, Britt, is to travel. So I love how small these are. Okay, let's move on to the next item. This wash buff bar is so cute, but how does it work? So we're talking about the sponge gel infused buffer yeah. right now. So this is amazing because you see that it comes in this gorgeous flower design, but this gives you a chance to exfoliate, cleanse, and moisturize your body in up to 14 washes. And we're talking about a body reset here because when you really exfoliate your skin, that's when you give your skin the chance to glow. So this is by Spun Gel, their body-infused wash buffers. They're all available at Anthropology for $16. They're super easy to just hang on to your shower, cleanse your skin, and they come in all of these gorgeous scents Mako. This is the Freesia Pear, absolutely stunning. It's gonna really create that spa-like experience in your bathroom. And I know not a lot of us are getting out to the spas right now. So if you wanna do that for you, reset at home and give yourself that pampering experience, this is what you need. I love that. And it's like a two and one. So it's such a space saver. It's a time saver. I absolutely love that. Okay, so let's move on to electronics. Everyone can relate to this. You got wires all over the place. I love that this next item can keep you organized. Exactly, I like to keep everything organized. So in order to reset your life in terms of your electronics and all those different cords, this is a case from Ganamoto. You can get it on Amazon, $45.99, and they come in different sizes. All you do is just slip all of your wires in here, basically organize them by area. You can also put your chargers in there as well. So this is something that you can have everything in one place. And then when you are going to look for something, because I'm always losing the cord for the specific item, you know where it is, right? It's in that specific yeah. place, it's in that compartment, and then you just zip it up and you're uh -huh. good to go. How so, perfect is that? This is going to be a lifesaver for you and your family if you get one of these. Speaking of lifesavers, all about January Reset, we're trying to save you money. And when it comes to groceries, I want to keep my groceries fresher and keep them nice and organized. And I am so obsessed with these meal prep containers. These colors are so cute. Aren't they amazing? So oh. these are the Ello Dura Glass containers. They come by color coding and they're glass. So when your food is stored in glass, it really preserves the food longer. It keeps everything airtight. It's also BPA free. So you just put your food in there for the week, prep it, you're ready to go. Load these in your refrigerator. If you want to take these on the go with you too, you have the silicone coating that surrounds the glass to keep everything safe. Stack them up and you've got your meal prepped for the week. I mean, it's not, it's easier than that, right? That is so clever. If you're starting to go back into the office and you need uh, organizers, meal prep containers, these are so classy. Well, Britt, I feel like I'm ready for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for joining us on our January Reset. I hope you have a great sparkling 2022. You as well. Thanks so much, Mika. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The pill pouches, 
the Gloss Lab Manny Rescue, the Spawn Gel Box Flower Body Wash Infused Buffers, the Electronics Case, and the Glass Food Storage Meal Prep Containers. Up next, Jen Fowler continues with the January Reset, whether your reset goals are in the kitchen or in the gym. Don't go away. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today Show's newest fan. This is the Little Al Roker. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital. You rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick. Welcome back to Shop All Day, where we're talking all about that January reset. We have must-have products, whether your New Year goals are drinking more water, spending more time in the kitchen, or making more me time. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Upping your daily water intake can be key to reaching your health and fitness goals, which is why so many of us are making the resolution to drink more water in 2022. And this water bottle could help make all the difference. Check this out. So this is a water bottle that has a time marker, but unlike many similar products, this water bottle is actually really sleek looking. You can bring this with you out and about all day long. You could bring it to a work meeting. It fits in the cup holder of your car. It's just like a fashionable, great accessory item that happens to also help you achieve your hydration goals. All you gotta do is stick to the markers, refill at lunchtime, and by the end of the day, you will have downed half a gallon of H2O no problem. There's different colors. I love the metallic tops too. Easy to clean. These are genius. Another great way to stay on point with your health, wellness, and fitness goals is to get into the smoothie lifestyle. I am a huge fan of smoothies because for me, they're so delicious. They're really filling. And with this product, they are so easy to make. This is the blend jet. And all you got to do with this charge it up it's usb rechargeable so every full charge is going to give you 15 smoothies that you can blend up anywhere anytime on demand you throw this in your bag and you literally put in whatever you want to mix in your smoothie i love to put in some berries a little milk maybe a little protein powder if you're in the mood and you don't even need a cup because 
You can drink right from the top of the jar. It's small, but this is a mighty. There's a patented turbojet technology in here that blends some of the toughest foods in 20 seconds flat, according to the brand. Comes in a ton of fun colors too. I love the little turquoise here, the blue. This is such a great gift for a fitness fanatic. Do you have anyone that you want to gift to this month? But for yourself, this is a must. Now, if getting to the gym is part of your 2022 plan, we have an elevated essential that you need to own. Check out this duffel exercise bag. It can really feel overwhelming to pack up for the gym when you have a full day ahead of you. I love that this has compartments for everything, so it's so much easier to pack efficiently. You've got the spot for your water bottle, there's a spot for your sneakers. You know, there actually is a separate shoe compartment. You can also attach your yoga mat up here. And I love that there's a waterproof compartment in here. So after your workout, you can store your workout where in there until you've got a chance to throw it in the laundry. We cannot ignore the fact that this bag is cute. I love the quilting. I love the gold zipper detail. It's got a crossbody strap so you can tote it around hands-free. All the options. Now that we have your fitness hacks handled, let's talk about meal prep. If that was one of your resolutions, we're gonna start with this Herb Saver Pod. I am madly in love with this product. I own three and they are always in my fridge at all times. This preserves your herbs and saves valuable space in your fridge. All you do is you rinse and dry your favorite fresh herbs, be basil, mint, oregano, dill, and you place them right inside the pod. Then there's this little spigot on the back. You just add water to the bottom. And these herbs will be good to go for up to three weeks. In addition to herbs, I put asparagus and scallions in these. And you save so much money too because there's less waste. Now that you have a fridge stocked with delicious fresh herbs, enter the herb shears. Check these out. I absolutely love these. The fact that I can literally chop fresh herbs right into a salad or right on top of chicken is huge. You can just snip and savor the most delicious meals. Plus, these are so easy to clean. They come with a little comb that you can basically brush through to get any little bits and pieces out, give it a quick rinse under the faucet, and then throw them right in the dishwasher. It couldn't be easier. Now, planning ahead is the key to changing your life with meal prep, but you need to be ready to store all the staples that you make. And bulky containers can take up way more space than we have to spare, right? Enter these collapsible containers, ready? These are stackable and collapsible silicone containers. They're great to store all kinds of food. You can put your leftovers in here, you can put your chopped up prep veggies. These have a snap on lid. Snap it on, you know when it's nice and secure. And when not in use, you can collapse them down to one third of their original size, right? So this is what they collapse down, so easy to store. Besides saving space at home, if you're taking a snack to go, once you're done, flatten them out and You've got more room for everything else that you need to bring around with you every day. This next product is another one that we swear by in my house. These reusable lidded bowls have a sturdy lid that has a really secure wrap. So it's easy for all ages from my six-year-olds all the way up to open and then when they're done to reseal. All you gotta do, put the top right on and easy to clip it right around. It's leak proof and it's sleek looking. So this is sophisticated enough for me to take with me. If I'm going to like a work meeting, this looks like a beautiful high-end bowl, but totally portable. Now, to round out the resolution trifecta, the next thing everyone's thinking about right now is getting a better night of sleep. So first up is a white noise machine. I love this white noise machine because besides drowning out environmental noise, white noise can become part of that bedtime ritual that really helps to cue your brain and your body that it's time to wind down. This machine right here, so little, right? It has 20 sounds to choose from, including ocean, rain, bonfire noises, if traditional white noise isn't your thing. And it has a little timer right here, so if you want it to auto shut off after an hour, you can, or if you prefer that white noise to last all night long, it'll work that way too. Another thing that's important to note about this, again, is the portability. I find that when I'm on a work trip or if I'm away with my family, having those little reminders of my nighttime routine on a daily basis really helps me to fall asleep. 
And now that we've set the ambiance with the white noise, the sleep eye mask is the last thing you need to complete the moment. And this one is a gem. Light is super disruptive when you're trying to sleep, both falling asleep and staying asleep. And while you cannot always control the environment around you, with this sleep mask, you can control how it affects your rest. I love the design. Some sleep masks can feel claustrophobic. They really press down on your eyelids but not this one. With this, you've got the little openings here so your eyes can breathe and blink. It's memory foam as well, so it means you're gonna get a custom comfy fit every time and beautiful colors too. It just feels great, it works wonders, it's a no-brainer. Now let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the water bottle with time marker, the blend jet, the Exercise Duffel Bag, the Herb Saver Pod, the Herb Shears, the Collapsible Containers, the Reusable Lid and Bowl, the White Noise Machine, and the Sleep Eye Mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on all your better basics and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Thanks for doing this, Her. Great to see you. Great to see you. I want to tell you right out of the box, this is the highest elevation we've ever done one of these interviews. 101 stories. I've never been this high up in my life. <laughs> this is crazy. It's kind of crazy, isn't yeah, it? It's beautiful, though. We felt like it was perfect for you given where you are right now, on top of the game with this year you've had between oh. playing the Super Bowl and a Grammy and an Oscar. How does it feel to be in the middle of this moment right now? I don't know how to describe it. It kind of feels like this view, you know? It's like all you can do is just sit and, and enjoy it and, and be thankful for it. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like taking every moment, trying to seize every moment. And I know this is just the beginning, which is really like scary, but amazing in a way. So um, I'm just taking it all in. And I'm, I, I know that this is a very special, special situation. You know, I know that this doesn't happen all the time. So I'm, I'm just so grateful. So we're just a couple of days away from your 24th birthday. Yes. It's kind of crazy and I know you can't stop and let it wash over you completely because you're moving around doing so much, but have you processed at all what these few months have been like and how early in your career these things have started to happen for you? I guess so. I, I have been thinking about it like, wow. And of course you have those doubts like, do I deserve this? You know, do, do I deserve to be here? And, and I have to remember, you know, I've been doing music for my, pretty much my whole life. You know, I've worked for so many years and then I have to give myself more credit. You know, I have to say, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. You've worked for it and you should be proud of yourself. So I've just been working on being proud of myself. Because of course, you know, when, when you create this art and you do, do these things, you're, you know, the hardest on yourself. So I'm always hard on myself, but now I've really been taking in the moment to like, you know, pat myself on the back. <laughs> it feels like people in the music industry and real fans of music have known you for several years, but when you stood up there during the Super Bowl and did America the Beautiful with that guitar and you were by yourself and singing and playing, I think a huge audience of football fans or, you know, a part of the country that maybe didn't even know who you were stopped and said, who is that? How special was that performance for you? I, it was very special and the timing I think couldn't have been more perfect because you see a young black woman, black Filipino woman up there on the stage, you know, playing electric guitar and I don't think you see that very often, you know, especially on a stage like that. So I just felt so like excited and nervous at the same time because it is, you know, one of the biggest stages ever. Um, but it was so much fun. My mom was there with me and like I know she was super proud So, you know, we'll be back for, for a halftime show one of these days. <laughs> you will. I, <laughs> I bet you will I, I always think about when I see somebody singing the national anthem or just a, being alone on a stage that big mm -hmm. Do the nerves come in different than other performances? Do you think oh there are a hundred million people watching this? Oh, yeah, sometimes <laughs> definitely definitely but it, it takes about like two words or a line and then I'm, I'm in it I'm like I'm in the performance and I'm nowhere else. You click into that zone. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you corrected me when you were right. I almost caught myself when I said so early in your career. Your career started when you were a toddler, basically <laughs> sitting at the piano, and you were on the Today Show 
when you were 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> um, 2007, sitting in a piano in a little fur vest you had on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and your parents were in the studio and Hoda was interviewing you and then you played Alicia Keys. Yeah. And now tomorrow, you're getting ready to go stand on that city concert stage with a big crowd mm -hmm. on a Friday afternoon. That's a kind of a crazy full circle moment. It is, it, and I, there's been tons of those full circle moments. And I think that's what really shows me that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Um, but you know, it, like it is early in my career. It's fair to say that, you know, I'm only 23 years old. So um, I still got a, a whole lot of years of, of doing this thing, you know, to, you know, to, to be in it and, and, you know, do my thing. It's like crazy to think that I'm only 23 and so much has happened, but. And it is early. And so back in your mind, I was reading, is technically your debut album. I mean, I wouldn't say... What does that mean say, exactly? Because I, we've been listening to you for years. I, don't, I wouldn't call it debut album. Okay. I would call it my first official album. Okay. Just because I've, I've released EPs before. Right. You know, it, it's only been EPs and then combined into one project. But this is my first official, you know, full body of work, like, album. And so what went into this? What was in the back of your mind? You were just saying, I've been listening to these songs on my phone for a couple of years now, yeah. and now they're out in the world. What's in the back of your mind? Um, so much, so much is in the back of my mind. I think this album is, is pieces of volume one and what got me here in the first place, you know, and it's uh, ele elevated and it's, it's the growth. It's, it's more musical. There's elements of live drums and, and you know, live, keys and, and band feels but there's also you know pieces of like more trap drums and new R&B sounds and I, I think all of that is in this project it's not just one specific period of time it's everything up until this point and you've said you're when you write a song it's sort of a another way of writing a diary almost that Absolutely. you put your thoughts down so what specifically has been on your mind for the last couple of years? What was coming out of your diary? What was coming out of my diary? It's all in the music. I'm not going to tell you because I have everything <laughs> revealed in the music. Okay, I've been listening to it, so I know. But for people who are going to go out and listen to it, how, when you decide to put out um, something this personal and an album like this, what is the process? I mean, I was, you said it's been a couple of years, but like you start with the blank page and what do you want to say? when you're putting out your your album you know it, it's moment by moment it's what do i feel today or what did i feel yesterday you know that i need to get out um on this this paper you know in this song um and, and when i do that you don't realize you're working towards a body of work you know at least i don't i don't realize that oh this is actually a story because it's my life it's just a collection of songs that represent different feelings and different moods i'm super moody so there's so many different <laughs> moods you know that go into this project and um, yeah, it's like I went into the studio thinking I'm just going to make great music. I'm going to make a good song. It doesn't matter what's in it. I don't care if it's a, a, a flute or if it's a, a trap hi-hat. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a great, it's a great song, it's a great song. And to me, some of the best songs sound great, you know, when they're stripped down. So if they sound good like that, then they're going to sound good any kind of way. Um, and that's kind of what I start with. And with this project, I, I thought it's really time to make a full body of work. It's time to work towards. I had been touring from 2017 to 2019, pretty much. You know, I just was touring. So I never had time to really buckle down and like just focus in the studio on a full, full body of work. And this was, this was that. One of the things I love about you is you can't put your music into a box. People want to say, what kind of music? I mean, it's R&B, yes, but it's a little bit of older blues, it's Jimi Hendrix on the guitar. So when you were growing up, I love your list of influences because I don't think most people would expect it from a kid who grew up in the 2000s talking about names like B.B. King and Hendrix and, and yeah. Prince to go along with Mariah and Whitney and mm -hmm. all the people who influenced you. So when you were growing up in your house, I mentioned you were a toddler playing the piano on your dad's lap. Yep. How did this music thing start for you? Um, it was just, it, it seemed like it was there. It was like, you know, my dad's band was playing in the living room when my mom was pregnant. So I was probably, you know, in the womb, like, <laughs> I'm going to do this, you know, like probably. Um, and, and when I was growing up, it was like, there was all kinds of music around me. You know, um, I was blessed to grow up in an extended family home where it was my grandparents that grew up in the Philippines. You know, they 
were in the house with us. So they were listening to Johnny Mathis and Barry Manilow and, and uh, Celine Dion. And then my mom was listening to her favorite, you know, um, R&B artists like, you know, Jodeci and, and people like that. And, and then my dad was listening to Funk and James Brown and Hendrix, as well as Eric Clapton and as well as Ozzy Osbourne and ACDC because he was just such a guitar you know, guy, and then my uncle was playing, you know, Aaliyah and Joe and, you know, uh, Usher and, and people like that. So I was exposed to so many different types of music and I loved it all. I loved it all because I just heard all the details, you know, of, of everything and, and I took it all in and was like, maybe I can make this, you know, and I didn't think I thought about that really, but I just did, you know, I, I just did. And, and music was just something I loved. There was, it wasn't about the genre or the style. It was just, this is music. We began our cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, DC, the side of our nation's capital. You rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this? doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin. Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? And it seems to me you've always been comfortable performing. Maybe that's not true, but just watching you in that interview when you're 10 years old, yeah. the poise you had even during the interview. So you got to sit and talk to these two strangers for a while <laughs> before you play this song by someone you look up to, Alicia Keys on national television. Where do you get your stage presence? Is that from your dad too? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. You know, my dad, he would go on stage and it would be, you know, two people in the audience and he's going crazy, you know, no matter who's in the audience or it's a hundred people at a, at a club or a festival and he's going crazy. And, you know, they were, they were a cover band. So they would play songs like, you know, James Brown, get on up. And then they would play Sweet Home Alabama. Like it was like, there was no, he just had so much fun. And I think maybe watching him have so much fun on stage encouraged me too. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Was there ever a chance you weren't going to be a musician? I know you flirted with the idea of being a dentist for I a little did. while. When I was a kid, it was it was going to be something like probably in the medical field. You know, when you when you have an Asian mother, like the pressure of you know of the Asian family home. Sometimes it's like you know success is like got to become a doctor or like a right. nurse. You right. know, so I think that that was that was definitely going to be in the plans. And then you know I, that didn't work out. So. I just became a musician instead. So in your heart, you knew you were going to be a musician. <laughs> I think so. I think I decided, um, you know, it was a given. But when I graduated high school, I, I really decided I'm going to do this thing 100%. I'm going to be fully invested in this. And yeah. Have there ever been, once you decided, have there been bumps along the way where you said, man, this is a tough business. I don't know how to break through. I don't know if this is going to work out. And obviously, you've overcome all that if you had it. But have you been frustrated at certain points in oh, your rise? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've been blessed with an amazing team, MBK Entertainment, who believe in artist development. And they saw me when I was on the Today Show when I was 10 years old. And, and everybody saw something in me that I don't even think I saw in myself. Mm. But I shortly after that, I got signed to um, RCA Records, to MBK RCA. And I was 14. And, you know, of course, people around you are like, oh, you're going to be a huge star. Like, 
right away. They think that's how it works. And I think I knew that's not how it works, you know, just because I had been exposed so young um, and watching other artists. But um, of course, throughout those years, I'm working on my craft and I'm being patient, but I'm watching so many other artists, you know, become successful. Uh, they were manage, managing um, Elle Varner and Kay Michelle and Brandy and Alicia Keys and um, Justine Skye and all these different artists. And I watched them and I was, on the side of the stage at their shows. I was the ones, I was the one backstage cheering them on, you know, like, oh, that's gonna be me one day. But of course you get frustrated, like, when is it gonna be my turn? And of course I was working on my craft and people would say things like, oh, she's gonna get shelved, you know, she's mm -hmm. never gonna make it or she's never gonna put music out. And I think I just quieted all those voices and I knew, you know, what's for me is for me and, and it's gonna happen when it's supposed to and finally, as soon as I graduated high school um, the following year in 2016, we all took a chance and um, decided it's time to release volume one and finally really, you know, be, be the artist that I'm, I'm meant to be. And the rest is history. I feel like probably for a 14 year old coming into the music industry, they might have wanted to push you in a certain direction, certain Absolutely. people because it, I, it's got to be hard for them to even conceive of a 14 year old who wants to play the guitar like Jimi Hendrix and have this old school soulful sound like how do I market that, how do I sell it? Were, was there an effort by some people to kind of nudge you in a direction other than you found yourself? I mean, everybody has their opinions. Everybody has their thoughts and feelings on the artist I should be. Oh, you should do songs like this. You should do songs like this. And I've tried them all. I've done everything because I love all types of music and I'm not afraid to, you know, challenge myself. But when it was 2016 um, and I was, or 2015 really, and I was finally finding who I wanted to be as an artist, I realized I needed to make what was most authentic to me that fit into the world of what was going on in music at the same time. You know, you never compromise yourself, but you learn. And I had to be a student of the game, a student of what was happening in music. And so I did that and I listened to a lot of artists like Drake and Janae Aiko and Bryson Tiller at the time and um, so many different artists. Um, and I really admired that sound and I thought this might be the, the, the lane, this might be the sound that I would really like to make an introduction, you know, into the world of, uh, with, and, and that, was, that was how Volume One came to be. So tell me about the name Her, um, because that's part of your evolution as well. Why you decided to go with that and what the significance is to you? Um, you know, with, with Her, it was like a time in my life, of course, when you're in high school and, you know, you're changing and you're going through all these things and boys and, <laughs> you know, all these things that are part of life, right? And I always watch, like, the women that I, I grew up around and um, I always said, you know, I'm not going to be like them. I'm not going to, you know, fall for the wrong guy. Like, it was like a hopeless romantic way to think or I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be that vulnerable and, you know, I'm going to be like this type of woman and whatever that means, you know, when I was a teenager trying to be a perfectionist. And then I realized that it's inevitable to fall for the wrong guy or, you know, to make mistakes or, you know, to, to have feelings that, that are, are, you know, valid because it's part of life. You know, it's, it's inevitable to, to go through changes as a woman and to be imperfect, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I decided, you know, I, I really would like this music to reflect that period of time and, and all of those things. Um, and that's, that's why I decided to, to go by the name Her. And it was also a way to make people focus on the music because sometimes we listen with our eyes and not our ears, you know? And, and I really wanted the music to be the center of attention, not, you know, the, the, my, my look or how old I am or, you know, where I'm from and all of those things, what I'm wearing, who I'm dating. I, I just didn't think any of those things matter. I always wanted to get back to the art and to the music. And um, that's why I decided to just have a silhouette as the cover and for it to be called her. And do you think that has worked for you in terms of people sort of just being like, man, she can play, she can sing, and that's all I need to know about her? I think so. And I mean, I definitely think people, you know, were like, wow, the music, you yeah. know, it's all about the music. and. Now I feel there's an organic, you know, kind of reveal of, of me and who I am as a person and, you know, as an artist and, and you know, just a little bit more of the details, a little bit more of my face, you know, here and there. But, um, yeah, the music was the forefront and I'm, I'm happy that that's, that's the driving force here. Well, I was going to ask you about that. The new cover, we finally get to see a little of your face on a the cover. Bit, a little bit of my face. And that's by design. Here's a little peek. Yeah, it is. You know, they say 
eyes are the window to the soul. My music is the window to my soul. You know, but here's a little here's a little peek into my soul. So what do you think now that you give us a little peek people should know about you that they don't know about you through all these years of listening to your music as you open yourself up mm. a little bit? That's a really good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that I think the major thing is like don't take yourself too seriously all the time. You really have to enjoy this. I, I find myself um, like forgetting to just be in the moment, you know, and I'm working on that, but I think people need to know that, you know, I don't take myself too seriously. I take my art and my expression seriously, but I don't take myself too seriously. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the way, I'm All right, it just did it, too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I mentioned your Grammy this year, which you won for I Can't Breathe. Yeah. Um, I was talking last week, we had Trevor Noah on the show, and we were talking about doing comedy in this year that didn't feel very funny yeah. and how you address everything that's happening in the country. So the song obviously addresses what's been happening in our country, not just for the last year, but for generations. Mm -hmm. What was it like to make music in this last year as you would watch the news or see something happening in the streets and want to have something to say about it? Yeah, it was, um, it was a tough year. I actually didn't create a lot in the first half of the year because it was just so like, I had my whole year plan, I was gonna do a bunch of shows and it all just came to a stop and that's very scary. Like, okay, we have no idea what's going on. So, um, you know, when the summer happened and the George Floyd protests were happening, of course we were all affected by it, but it was just like this new awareness and like this, you could not escape it. You couldn't say, oh, you know, I'll read about that article later or I'll, you know, you could not avoid it. So seeing that, um, I ended up just calling um, T.R. Thomas, who I write with all, all the time, yeah. but we're, we're friends, you know, that's like my big sister. Um, and we were just catching up. We started talking about, like, isn't this crazy? And, and she started talking about her pain, I started talking about my pain, and just, you know, just the fear that we both had. And suddenly we ended up writing a song. My guitar stays next to my, uh, my bed uh, in my mom's house, and I was at my mom's house during quarantine, and I picked up the guitar, and we, we just started asking, you know those questions like to ourselves like how do we cope when we don't love each other what is a gun to a man that surrenders all these things that we really felt and um, it kind of just happened organically and um, I ended up recording it in my my room you know I was wow. like engineering myself and the dogs were barking I had to <laughs> wait for a second and then continue recording and um, you know and I just felt like wow okay this is something that I want to put out there because it reflected how we felt 
So the song of the year was recorded in a bedroom in your mom's house. Yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That had to be incredibly gratifying, though, to hear your name called for not just for that song, but for what it was speaking about, oh to be the song of the year at the Grammys. You have no idea. So I didn't expect it to win. You know, I, I, I really didn't. I was like, oh, man, these are all amazing and you know, incredible artists. I just wrote the song in, in my room, you know? <laughs> I didn't... That's cool enough, and then you win an Oscar. Yeah, oh <laughs> on my top gosh. of it, I mean, it's crazy. What was that experience? I like? mean, the next day after winning Song of the Year, you know, they were like, the Oscar nominations are, are gonna come out, and I was like, okay, well, it, it's okay if I don't get nominated. I got Song of the Year, like it's all good. We got the nomination, and I'm like talking it down because I'm like, this is a huge deal, but I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get my hopes up for anything. And we go, and it's super chill, and my mom's there, and she's all like happy, just happy to be there. We're meeting Angela Bassett, and then you know, Zadea calls my name, yep. and you know, I, I everything just stopped for a second. Everything just stopped. I was like. Did this really just happen? Like, did I just win an Oscar? Am I an Oscar winner? <laughs> and of course, I thought about you know Prince winning his Oscar. I thought about like, just all of these things, um, the movie, and and the importance of that film that I was even winning for. I just felt like bigger than me. Like, oh my gosh, I'm being recognized for this specific moment. Um, this 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 movie based on an important moment in Black history, which was even more rewarding, you know, to be winning an Oscar for that. So. There were all of these things going through my head, and I just couldn't even like, <laughs> couldn't even fathom, you know, what was going on. I'm sure. So in the space of a couple of weeks, you got the G and the O and the E got. We just got to get to the outside <laughs> now. Got to get to the, the E right? and the T. There's some talk that you might be doing some work on Broadway potentially. That you want to get into acting. Absolutely. Is that in your future? Absolutely. Um, I had a, a little part in the, the movie Yesterday with Jennifer Garner. Yeah. And um, I got to play myself, but I had some lines, and you know they were all like, "Wow, you're, you know you're such a natural." And I've actually loved acting for so many years, um, but music has been the main focus. So I'll definitely be on the big screen soon. I'll, I'll make some time for it. No reason you can't do both, right? Exactly. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it too. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I'm curious, um, everyone seems to have a moment in their career where they feel like everything changed. Mm. Do you have one? Some people point to Rihanna posting the video with your song on in the background. That was a big moment. Was it? Yeah, that was definitely a big moment. It was like, oh my gosh, like people really listen to my music. But I, I think it's it's not so much, you know, social media really, it is, but it, it's more so when I'm really with the people. You know, when, I'm, when I was on stage opening up for Bryson Tiller in 2017 in Atlanta, this was my first show you know, well, not my very first show, but my first show on a tour um, after I released my project. Um, everybody was singing the lyrics. And I was like, oh my gosh, these people know the lyrics to my songs? Like, we're all freaking out. Like, did you hear them? You know, like they were really singing along. And I knew at that point, you know, um, 
that I was really getting a, a, a core following, like a, a group of people that, that really love my music. And then fast forward, I'm doing a festival in Las Vegas, and there's people with cowboy hats in the audience <laughs> singing all the lyrics to my songs. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. You know, it's so much more than I thought. But it just shows you, you know, music brings people together. And I, I didn't think I would have the, the ability to do that. But um, I, I, I see it and I, I thought, feel it. I thought the same thing watching you at the CMTs with yeah. Stapleton. That, that's a country audience and they were singing yeah. along. And they're, they, you know, you've got fans across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And you've been smart. You've come up in this generation <clears throat> where you, know, you don't have to focus on the radio as much, mm -hmm. right? You can do streaming and social media. Um, does that make it easier for an artist to be able to just put your stuff out directly in some ways? Definitely. When you use social media as a tool, I think it definitely makes it easier. Like, I kind of um, built this thing. We, we built this, like, kind of like a rapper, you know, where you put out a mixtape yeah. and you just grind. And it was a lot of, you know, posting. And it was really word of mouth, you know, like, and then really getting on the road and just touring. I toured for, like, two or three years, you know, just you know, just on the road and, and doing my thing. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it makes it easier and it's hard, there's so much out there and you could get discouraged, but when you are totally your authentic self and you put yourself out there, anything is possible, you know? And there's somebody out there that is looking for somebody like you to look up to, mm. you know? So you gotta tell yourself that. That's a great message because I think a lot of people are trying to be something they think will be popular yeah. and people will make people like them. Yeah, no. And you get lost doing that, don't you? You get lost and, and then you regret it because you're like, why didn't I just stick to, to my guns? Why didn't I just be who I am? You know, and that's that's part of life. We all have, you know, a hard time being who we we really are and being afraid of, of you know, standing out too much. But when you realize standing out is your superpower and that you're actually helping other people by standing out, you know, helping them be comfortable in their own skin by you being comfortable in your own skin, then then you have impact. I know you've got sound check in a few hours, basically, because <laughs> you have to get Pretty up much. so early for the Today Show. So we'll let you go. But how much fun is it going to be? Not just tomorrow morning, but this summer and into the fall to get back on a stage and just hear those audience sing your songs back to you again. I'm so excited. You have no idea. I'm like, let's, let's, all right, let's, let's get to it. Let's, let's get on the stage. No, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Um, it's been a long time and uh, we've, we've lost a lot in the past year. And of course I've, I've been blessed to, to still be able to do what I'm, I do, but um, there's nothing like being in front of a real audience and having that connection. So I can't wait. Well, I'm so happy for your success. It's great to see somebody true and real and so talented succeeding the way you are. Thank so, you so much. Congrats, and we'll see you on TV at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. What's happening, everybody? It is great to see you. Welcome to this Thursday edition of Popstar Plus. On today's show, we are checking in with two of the stars of the show, Cheer, the popular cheerleading docuseries, back for another season. Plus, a fun from the vault today. We've got a clip with McDreamy himself, Patrick Dempsey. But first, here's what's going on in the world of entertainment. A lot to get to today. It's award show season. We'll start with the SAG Award nominations for the 20th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. They were announced on Wednesday and leading the pack for movies this year with three nominations each. Ridley Scott's House of Gucci that stars Lady Gaga, Adam Driver, and Al Pacino. Jared Leto as well. And Netflix's Western Power of the Dog with Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, and Jesse Plemons. And after big wins at last weekend's Golden Globes for top acting in a drama, Will Smith and Nicole Kidman are again nominated for their work in the biopics King Richard and being the Ricardos over in the world of TV. HBO's hit drama Succession continues its domination this award season, this time with five noms, including three for best actor in a drama, going to all three stars in that show, Brian oh. Cox, Kieran Culkin, and Jeremy Strong, and tied with them for the top number of nods, one of our favorites around here, Uncle Al, Ted Lasso. Oh, yes. That cast earning five nominations as well. The SAG Awards are set to take place with an in-person ceremony on February 27th. Next up, Rihanna, the Grammy winner, is part of a very select group of artists in YouTube's Billion Views Club. This week, Riri crossed the threshold of one billion streams on a music video once again, this time for the 2013 hit Stay. Ooh. That uh, chart topped that, uh, with another vocalist on that track, Mickey Echo. Billboard reporting that it'll be Rihanna's eighth video Jeez. in that YouTube milestone Crazy. category of a billion views. Stay, if you're wondering, peaked at number three on the Hot 100 charts. It was nominated for Grammy as well, again, back in 2013. Mm. So shout out to Rihanna. Next up, 
I'm sure you read about this one. Oh, yes. I saw the picture. Megan Fox, Machine Gun Kelly, the Hollywood couple are officially engaged. On Wednesday, Megan posting this video from inside the big proposal, sharing in the caption that Machine Gun Kelly popped the question underneath a banyan tree mm. that holds some sentimental value in their relationship, Megan writing in the caption. And just as in every lifetime before this one, and as in every lifetime that will follow it, I said, wow. yes. Beautiful. Machine Gun Kelly sharing Beautiful. a look at uh, not one on that ring, but two unique diamonds. Well, one's a diamond, actually. The other one is an emerald, I believe. Their, huh. their birthstones being held uh -huh. by this sort of uh, thorn was the idea of them Beautiful. coming together. making nice. them, uh, Beautiful. He designed the whole thing. It was very cool. So congratulations to Machine Gun Kelly and uh, Megan Fox. All right, next up is Nev Campbell. The Scream star is revealing one of the most terrifying experiences that she's ever had on set and has nothing to do with a guy in a white mask. <laughs> Sitting down on the Kelly Clarkson show, Nev Campbell sharing how when she was just 17 years old, she was told to dip her hand what? in honey in an attempt to encourage a bear to chase her what? for a scene that she was shooting. Well, how do you think that went? <laughs> Me, they say dip your hand in honey and just run. And when you get to the tree over there, turn around and stick your hand out and feed the bear. And I, of course, wanting to please everyone, was like, okay. And I turn around and I put my hand out and the bear is not slowing down. And he's not coming from my hand. And he grabs me by the leg and he pulls me through the forest. And my mother happens to be visiting set, so she's screaming. And then finally the, the bear wrangler starts just throwing rocks at the bear to get it off me. And it finally gets pissed off and turns around and goes after him. And I run, I go up a rock. Um, yeah. What? Oh my There's God. a lot to unpack here. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a while. It looks incredible. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. That story is unbelievable. That is right. someone should have been mauled by a day. bear at 17 on a movie set. Yeah, that's, someone should have lost their job. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, just that's one big boo boo. Uh, they actually did that stunt. She wanted to do it again. Oh, I see you did there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Sorry. Uncle Al, come on. Yeah, so yeah, too yeah. soon. I'm not so even sorry. done with the item. You know what happened? She was 17. It's all good now. Wait till uh, I get into good. the Super Bowl commercial. It's all too good. It's all too good. It's too good. All right. Finally, as we head into the NFL playoffs, uh, everybody's favorite time of the year when brands start to break out the best commercials leading up to the Super Bowl. This morning, we've got a special sneak peek at Frito-Lay and PepsiCo Beverages joint campaign. They're calling it The Road to Super Bowl. The new ad features NFL legends Peyton and Eli Manning, also Jerome the Bus Bettis, Victor Cruz, and Terry Bradshaw. Here you go. Peyton, Eli, road trip to the Super Bowl. Hard pass, playoffs are on. You're paying for that door, by the way. So much longer. Bus, are we there yet? No. Hey, Bus, we gotta pull over for some more chips and drinks. Oh, you got it. <laughs> hey, guys, got room for one more? Got Doritos? Got Mountain Dew. We got one seat left, and it's special just for you. This is like a convertible. Stuff a whole lot better. Oh, that's great. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Right? Little Olivia right yeah, fine. there. Fine. We got the bus driving the bus. <laughs> yes. Genius. That's Hits good stuff there. Beautiful. That'll get you jacked and up. All, and it's all leading to the big game, everybody. February 13th. Guess where it is? Where? where? Right, here. right here. On NBC. Uh, and Peacock. And, of course, we have a lot more to cover here on Popstar Plus. And we'll start with Adele. The Grammy winner is back with a brand-new music video. This time, Adele bringing us some serious black-and-white drama in the video for Oh My God, which is off her latest album, 30. Here's a little peek. Well, she looks and sounds incredible per usual. Interesting, Adele actually shot this video on the same day that Easy On Me came out and was released. It was the first single in six years. So it has indeed been a whirlwind few months for Adele. Next up on Popstar Plus, and finally, Red Notice, the hit comedic heist movie is getting the sequel treatment. Deadline reporting that a follow-up is in the works for the star-studded film. Of course, it stars Ryan Reynolds, Gal Gadot, and Dwayne Johnson. They're all expected to return. Back in November, Red Notice debuted with the biggest opening weekend ever for a Netflix film. The action comedy hit number one on Netflix's global, global streaming charts. So we don't want to spoil anything, but if you've seen the film, you know it ends on a big cliffhanger. So we are dying to see what's next. And that is going to wrap up today's Popstar Plus headlines. But up next, we're giving you something to cheer about from two of the stars on the Netflix hit. They're going to be taking us inside season two. Stay with us. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man with the Richard. All right, it just did too. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. And we're back. Viewers quickly connected with Cheer when it debuted on Netflix back in 2020, following the ups and downs of life in competitive college cheerleading. Now, the show's back for a second season, tracking more competitions, controversies, and emotions. And we spoke with two of the show stars, Gabby Butler and Morgan Simonier. Take a look. Navarro and Trinity Valley battling it out yet again. I have not seen Cheer yet, but what I know you can expect is the season 2020 and the season 2021. You know, following the team again, there's going to be some familiar faces, there's going to be some new faces. If Navarro slips up this year, Trinity Valley is right there to snatch the title from them. I would have to say the thing that I think would surprise people the most, it's just this whole entire season is full of a bunch of just craziness and yeah, just wild. I left after 2019 and I went back home to cheer, but I felt like I still have years to go there. And I figured honestly, like that place is my home. It will always be my home, even 10 years from now. Navarro will always have my heart and Monica will always have my heart. That woman is amazing. She's been a huge impact in my life and she still talks to me to this very day. So that's why I went back. I felt like I have more years to give, so I'm gonna give it. Every, I, I'm gonna give Nav Navarro and Monica everything that I've got. Since the show came out, there was just like so much craziness. Being in the spotlight once the show first came out was very overwhelming. I was doing double school and cheering at Navarro and, you know, jumping on flights to go do interviews and all of that. So it was kind of hard to juggle it at first. And, you know, we weren't expecting season one to blow up the way it did. But I was like so excited for like what each day was going to have. So it was incredible. From a young age, I've kind of been thrown into the public eye for many years now and obviously it was just cheerleading and as the show came out I it started getting bigger with other audiences and you know real life people that aren't involved in cheerleading so uh, it's definitely been something I'm somewhat familiar with so I've kind of had a little bit of a head start but it's definitely it's amazing that you can touch people's lives without even knowing and impact it for the good. Because I feel like if you have a pull, you can really change someone's life for the better. And if I can change at least one person's life, then, you know, that makes me feel very good. Cheerleading is the only thing that could get my mind off of everything else. I think some of the biggest takeaways from the show is that we are normal people and, you know, nothing is staged and also our stories are so raw and so real and it's just very relatable for people. Like there are people out there that are struggling and don't really know how to handle it, but seeing our stories and being able to connect to us on one level or another um, just kind of opens opportunity for them to not feel alone and feel accepted. I kind of lost myself. If I wouldn't have came here, I'd be sitting in a jail cell right now. When you're vulnerable, I feel like that is the best 
way to connect with people because people go on social media or they'll go on TV and it's like a bunch of things that aren't necessarily true. You know, we're not perfect. The truth is we have our bad days, we have our fights, we have our struggles and our weaknesses. And I feel like it's a very good way of, yeah, having people feel like they're not alone in this world that we live in, this crazy, crazy world. And again, season two of Cheer is on Netflix right now. Coming up, Savannah's chatting with the star of another hit show, Euphoria. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man who never did. All right, it just did too. Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. We began our cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstart Plus. HBO's hit show Euphoria has returned for its long-awaited second season. So we thought it was the perfect time to revisit Savannah's six-minute marathon with Storm Reid, who plays Gia. Check it out. Welcome, Storm, to Thanks. Six Minute Marathon. I'm excited. Are you ready? Are you stretched? You limbered up? Yes. You ready? I think for... I'm going to do a good job. I think you are too. <laughs> I feel good about it. First question: What never fails to make you smile? My family. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and you've got brothers and sisters, right? I do. I have two sisters and one brother. Wow. What show do you always have playing in the background? Ooh, I don't watch much TV, but there's always a TV on in my house. Yes. And there's always the news. So we could stay informed. Yes. Well, yeah. that's good. Yes. You, you could say euphoria. Right. Well, you're most famous yeah. for. <laughs> Which fashion trend are you loving right now? I'm loving like where people are wearing any type of sneaker, but specifically a high top sneaker and then like long socks, and oh. you can kind of see the socks like. It's kind of like a cutoff jean, and you see the socks, and then you see the I'm sneaker. I'm pro-sock. Look, I've been right. wearing socks, exactly. sort of. I, I'll tell you, my trend I'm loving is your nails. Oh, thank you. They are beautiful. Thank you. I love that. Who are you inspired by? So many people, but um, my mom. She's my first inspiration. <laughs> What's your hype-up song? Probably... It's been Bodak Yellow for a long time. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big Cardi B fan. Yeah, and that's all. Every time it'll pump you up. Yes. Okay. Do you prefer texting or talking on the phone? Texting. Me too. <laughs> it's easier. Does anyone even call anymore? I mean, yes, I do love talking on the phone, but texting is just like more convenient. But sometimes texts can get like misconstrued. Definitely. And you don't know how a person is really feeling. So a phone call is better. That's when you need emojis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most famous person you have in your phone? Probably Miss Oprah. <laughs> you have Oprah's phone number. That's incredible. Do you text sometimes? Sometimes, yes. We have a group chat. If um, she calls, you pick up the phone. Oh, of course. I guess. Okay. Put everything down. <laughs> <laughs> what is your ideal date? I like being at home. So, like, getting snacks, watching movies or television shows, and yeah. just chilling at home. What's your favorite movie? 
Matilda, all time. Like, that's my favorite movie. Have you ever used the fact that you're a celebrity to get out of trouble? No. No. I don't usually get in trouble, but I feel like if I were to get in trouble, I mean, I just have to own it and, yeah. and learn from my mistake and move on. Yeah. I think that's good. <laughs> yes. Good that your mom would be proud. Right. What is your hidden talent? My hidden talent. <laughs> so, like, if I drop something on the floor and I don't feel like reaching down, I could pick up something, like, with my toe. Really? <laughs> it's so weird. Looking for something right. to throw. Exactly. This would be too easy. Right. So you have, your toes are, like, superhuman. Yes, I could pick up stuff. Wow. <laughs> that comes in handy, too. Right. What's your guilty pleasure? Mmm, chocolate chip cookies. Mm. Oh, so good. Do you bake them, or? I do, I love to bake. Yeah. I love to cook, so I make a good chocolate chip cookie. How did you learn to cook? Oh, my mom is an amazing cook. Um, and then, like, I always just used to watch the Food Network. Oh. And then I have, like, cooking books, so it's a, a big deal in You're my house. You're into it. Okay. Yes. If you were stuck on a desert island but could bring one type of food with you to eat forever, what would you bring? Probably my mom's macaroni and cheese. My mom has the best macaroni and cheese I've ever had. Oh, and that's good. That'll keep you keep you going. Right. Yeah. Good. It's probably not the healthiest choice, but you're on a desert island. Exactly. You know, <laughs> just go with it. Who is your dream actor or actress to work with? Uh, right now, Miss Meryl Streep. I think she's incredible. I would love to work with her. I love how you say. Miss Meryl, Miss Oprah. <laughs> yes. Is that just some good Southern upbringing right yes, there? Yes, yes. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's just the Southern hospitality. I like <laughs> it. I might just try that with my own kids. <laughs> the greatest advice you ever got from your parents? Ooh, just to always be myself and don't let anyone tell me that I can't do something because I can. And as long as I'm a good person and I'm prepared, then I'll be able to do anything I want to do. If you could have a superpower, Besides your feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> what would it be? Um, probably to fly. I hate sitting in traffic, yeah. and I like getting places fast. So if I could fly and get places fast and safe, then I'd do it. If you know what? Flying is the best. Why would anyone want any other superpower? Exactly. What other answer is there? Right. Hearing well? No. Exactly. Or like fly. reading people's minds. That no. might get your feelings hurt. <laughs> no. Exactly. <laughs> flying all right. the way. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Night owl. Really? Yes. Do you stay up late a lot? I don't stay up too late, but I feel like, I mean, waking up initially is a little hard, and then I could get into the, the groove of things, but initially I'm like, oh, can I get some more sleep? If you could set your own <laughs> schedule, what time would you go to bed? I usually go to bed around like 11, 30, 12, okay. so that's not too bad. Not terrible. Um, I could go to sleep earlier, but I'm always like doing something or like talking to my mom or my sister. Or Oprah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if your friends could describe you in one word, what would it be? Funny. Mm. I think I'm hilarious. I think you are too. And charming. <laughs> Thank and you. gorgeous. Thank you. What is the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? I am very adventurous. Okay. So I like I I'm when I'm like on vacation, I'm like willing to like do some fun things. Like I want to go parasailing. I want to go skydiving for my 18th birthday. Okay, you're gonna so, see. Yeah, I am. All right. <laughs> Last movie that made you cry? Probably Queen and Slim. That's a movie like I I wept after. The, like the first time seeing it, I saw it twice, and the first time I was devastated. And it stuck with you. It did. But then you saw it again. I did. I see. I saw it again because it's a, a beautiful film, and I love Melina and Lena. And I had to go support again, and it's a great film. Mm. What is something you would like to learn? And I just hope I can like learn from each person that I work with. Like you never know what skill set a person has or how they operate through the world. So if I feel like I can continue to observe the people I work with, then I'll learn a whole bunch of new things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet you're a good teacher too. <laughs> uh, I try to be. <laughs> Storm, thank you so much. Thank you. That's it. Six minutes goes so fast. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool she has Oprah in her contacts. Who has that? Still coming up from the vault, Patrick Dempsey, circa 1990. And trust us, you're not going to want to miss it. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now.
are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. Patrick Dempsey turns 56 today, and in his honor, we're flashing back to 1990 when the then 24 year old actor visited us here today and shared some of his hidden talents. The movie Coupe de Ville opens tomorrow. It's billed as a comedy about three brothers who never got along as kids and who are forced by their father to drive a vintage 1954 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Detroit to Florida in time for their mother's birthday. The brothers, as you might expect, battle all the way to Florida. In the process, they get to know each other for the first time. The film stars Patrick Dempsey as one of the brothers. How you doing? I'm doing good, good thanks. I'm doing all right. is, is it true that this is based on a true story? Yeah, it's based on uh, Mike Biner's uh, father and brothers. Yeah. You're one of you're one of three yourself, right? Yes. Was, did you relate to this real easily? Uh, I was the baby of three, so I kind of uh, understood where he was coming from. Yeah. Give me an idea. Give me a character sketch of of Bobby. I mean, one of your brothers is 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 a bully, and one of them is kind of a peacemaker. Right. But but tell me about tell me about Bobby. What's Bobby in this? Thing? Well, he's like the little brother who everybody doesn't want to really deal with, and. Um, he just wants to be accepted as one of the peers, as one of, uh, you know, as an equal. And when he's not, he says, okay, you think I'm a kid, I'm gonna act like a kid. And he creates havoc. Yeah. It is strange to talk about um, 1963 as a period piece, <laughs> but I guess it's getting to be about that time. Yeah. I mean, was, was that a tough era for you to get into? Well, it was a time when the, the country wasn't so, you know, jaded. You know, we had a lot of faith in our, our government and uh, the people in control. And we were coming out of, you know, Camelot was in full swing. Kennedy was right there. The wall was just going up. So it was a hopeful time. Yeah, was it an eye opener for you? 63? Yeah, I mean, to get back in, <laughs> no, 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 obviously, to get into the part. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun uh, to sort of just do the research on the time period and to look back, and uh, the music was great. Yeah, let's get a look at a, at, a, at a piece of the film. I think you get an idea from this, how uh, serious and, and comedic the parts can be. We'll watch. You're right. Oh You're right. God, that's this incredible. Is incredible. This, this is the, the car. Oh my yeah, God. Cool. I don't oh believe it. God. That's amazing. You were right. Oh God, help oh. me. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm fine. You're gonna throw up? No, don't. Don't throw up in the car, buddy. I'm not gonna throw up. If he said he's not gonna throw up, he's not gonna throw up. I'm gonna throw up. No! That is a negative! Burton, do not throw up in this car! Don't pat! Marvin, pull the car over, I can't please. pull the car over, we're on a bridge! Oh. Barf at the back! No! No! Don't barf on the back! Gulp in the air, just swallow! Disgusting. Keep swallowing, okay? Swallow! Is that helping? Does that really work? Because you're swallowing your own throw-up, you know that, though. Buddy, you? don't listen to him! Buddy! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> your, your brothers in this are, are Ari Gross and, and Daniel Stern. Did you guys develop much of a camaraderie am among you as you did it? Oh, yeah, definitely. We became brothers, without a doubt. We, uh, we had a lot of fun, and we uh, fought a lot. Yeah. Was it a hard was it a hard movie to do? I mean, I know a lot of it was shot in in the south in in the summertime. Mm -hmm. It was it was hot. I mean, what It was very it was uh you were in the middle of Florida in the summer and um it was very hot. So everybody was drinking a lot of Gatorade and going to a bathroom a lot. Uh, that would make it difficult. Yeah. This, this this movie is is a real switch for you, isn't it? I mean, you you're usually the the romantic lead. Mm -hmm. Uh, it sounds a heck of a thing to say for somebody who's all of 24, but right. you're usually the romantic lead in your movies. Do you like the switch? I did like the switch because I got to work with really good actors, and uh, 
I learned a lot from them, and it was a different character for me to play and to see if I could do it. Uh. All right, now let's get to the real meat of this thing. Okay. Um, I mean, I went to school in Lewiston, Maine. Right. You're really from Lewiston, Maine. Now, well, how does, wait a minute, how does a kid from Lewiston, Maine make it to Hollywood? It was a big jump. Well, actually, I gotta say I'm from Buckfield. I went to school in Buckfield part-time, then I went, uh, grew up in Turner, too, and then I went to Lewiston. Oh, yeah. So I have to mention everybody. Okay. And, um, it just sort of happened, you know. I sort of was in the ski racing, then I learned how to ride the unicycle. And you were a state champion. Don't understand. Right, right. Go ahead. And I, this guy, Paul McKinney, taught me how to juggle. And I said, this is what I want to do, you know. And I started going to uh, Portland, Maine, to this agent there. And uh, I said, you know, can I do commercials and things? Tried out for this um, thing called Talent America. And I ended up winning, coming to New York. And I met this agent, Davina Wells. And uh, she sort of helped me get going. Fun fact, did you also know that Patrick starred in the movie Scream 3? With a new installment out this weekend, we've got a bonus flashback to the year 2000 when Patrick visited Studio 1A to talk about the iconic franchise. Take a look. Basically, I'm the uh, detective for the LAPD. Uh -huh. And I'm there investigating a murder that happens on the set of Stab 3. So how did you get involved in the Scream sequel? Uh, normal process, auditioning. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and was it fun to do? Uh, the movie or yeah. the auditioning process? No, the movie rather the than movie the was auditioning. A, yeah, the movie was uh, extremely difficult because uh, you were always sort of off balance with um, waiting for the script to come in and um, the anxiety. My, my very first day, I show up uh, having learned the lines that I thought I was going to do and they said, no, we're going to change that on you. Here's your new script, go. And but, the camera set up, you've got to go do it. So it was the actor's nightmare come to life. It was... But so was that, that, was was that intentional then? They, they, they wanted to keep you guys off No, I think they were well? just refining it and trying to make sure that all of the uh, pieces to the puzzle were being put together. So they were constantly revising. But they literally wouldn't give you the script until the day of the shoot. Well, uh, four minutes before I stepped in front of the camera. It was like, you, here you go, let's go shoot this. You've got plenty of time, no problems. And you're looking around at the crew and the crew's going, oh my God, what's wrong with this guy? And how did that work out? It was good. I, you know, when you see it, you, you would never even know, which is very nice. So there's this, as typical with the other screen movies, there's this kind of hot, young cast. Mm -hmm. What is it like working with your colleagues? It was a lot of fun. I mean, the, the energy on the set was very light. A lot of um, jokes played on each other. It was very enjoyable. Now, both the, the first two screen movies mm -hmm. are at times pretty gory. Right. And I heard that maybe some of the violence has been sort of tamed down a bit in this uh, one? Yeah, a little bit, yes. You're not going to oversell that one? Uh, no. I mean, uh, there's, yeah, it's a... It's violent, but at the same time, it's sort of uh, counterbalanced by a lot of humor. It is. I mean, it's sort of like a, a humorous look at this whole horror genre, right? I mean, that's yeah, the it's point. turning the genre pretty much upside down, right. and it makes fun of it at the same time. And there you go. McDreamy, happy birthday to you, sir. Thanks for being with us today. That is going to do it for Popstar Plus. We'll see you next time. Oh, hold a look. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Oh, wow, they those, came again. Those beautiful people. We appreciate you joining us for this edition of Today in 30. So happy to see you. It was a real busy morning around here, starting with Craig. Craig had an exclusive interview with Vice President Kamala Harris. She had a lot to say. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on. A lot to say when it came to the pandemic, uh, where the battle over our voting rights bill is heading, and more. So we're going to share part of our wide-ranging conversation in just a moment. And speaking of the COVID crisis, Kerry Sanders, he's taking us inside the race to keep up with all that demand for COVID tests and better masks, higher quality masks. So if you're having trouble finding either of those, you're going to want to see his report. And Hody, you and Jenna crossed another adventure off your bucket list. Okay, this one was way out of the comfort zone. Okay, we stepped outside. It was 32 degrees. We jumped in the ocean. Of course. No, yeah, we did. It's called the polar plunge. You know what it's called. Oh, yeah. I never thought I'd do it. We did it. And love to tell the story. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. So let's get this little show started. Miss Copy, it's time for... Today, Today in 30. We started with a pandemic. The vice president sharing her take on the current state of COVID in the United States and new criticism that's been leveled at the White House. As we sit here this week, we saw a record number of hospitalizations, adults and children. Uh, we've seen the infection record broken. I think a lot of people are, are scratching their heads and they're wondering one year into this administration, why, why aren't we doing better in the fight against COVID? So let me start with saying that people are rightly frustrated with where we are. We're frustrated, we're all frustrated, but 
I think it's a mistake, and it would be a mistake to suggest that we've not seen great progress. If you think back to March of 2020, we were all wiping down the boxes that we got if we ordered things online. Uh, we, there was no vaccine. Now we have a vaccine, which has proved to be effective, and boosters. Now we have our children back in school. 95% of schools are back open. But we're, we're, we're building back up, we're opening back up, and we are not where we were a year ago. Let's talk about masks for a second. It's been several weeks now since public health experts have acknowledged that cloth masks, surgical masks, they're not as effective in, in terms of stopping this new variant, Omicron. Should, should Americans be wearing KN95 masks or N95 masks? Well, the CDC is going to be providing us with those guidelines. But, but what, what's course, taking so long? Well, the CDC is making their decisions. I don't make the CDC's decisions. But what I will say is what, what has been clear about the masks is you want to wear a tight-fitting mask. That is clear. And we want to urge everybody to do that. In terms of the N95 masks, they are available. There is a stockpile of, I believe, over 700 million of those masks. So the supply is there as necessary and as needed. At what point does the administration say, you know what, this strategy isn't working. We're going to change strategies. Six former administration officials last week wrote that open letter urging the administration to change course, to change strategy. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. And so right now we know we still have a number of people that, that is in the millions of Americans who have not been vaccinated and could be vaccinated, and we are urging them to get vaccinated because it will save their life. At, at what point but, does the administration acknowledge these people aren't going to get the shot? They're just not going to do it. I don't believe in giving up on people, Craig. I really don't. The 500 million tests that have been ordered that are going to be sent to every, every American, do we know when those are going out? Shortly, though they're going to go out next shortly. They've been or? ordered, they've been ordered. We, I have to look at the current information. I think it's going to be by next week, but soon, absolutely soon. And it is a matter of urgency for us. Should we have done that sooner? We are doing it. But should we have done it sooner? We are doing it. Let's turn the voting rights here for a moment. Um, you were there in Atlanta with the president yeah. um, when he uh, compared those who oppose uh, Democratic-backed voting bills that are currently in the Senate. He compared the folks who oppose those to folks who oppose civil rights. Senator Romney, in response yesterday, he took to the floor of the Senate and he said, quote, so much for unifying the country. When, when the president was on the campaign trail in the fall of 2020, he said something. He said, with Trump out of the way, the vindictiveness of a president going after Republicans who don't do exactly what he says gets taken away. Isn't that exactly what, what President Biden did in Atlanta on Wednesday? President Biden took the, I believe, right and courageous step to say that Senate rules should not get in the way of protecting the American people's access to the ballot. And he compared this time to a previous time in our history, which is apt for comparison. It's not just Republican opposition. It, it would seem as if this piece of legislation is going to come down to one or two uh, moderate Democrats. In months and weeks, the administration hasn't been able to convince one or two senators to come around. How are you going to do that in two or three days? If I may, I'd like to contextualize this conversation, sure. which is in 2006, in this very town of Washington, D.C., up the street at the United States Capitol, in the United States Senate, 98 of the 100 members of the United States Senate voted in favor of an extension of the Voting Rights Act. It was not a partisan issue. It was an American issue. But Madam Vice President, how are you going to get it done? Well, 
Well, when we have the discussion about who's responsible, I will not absolve the 50 Republicans in the United States Senate from responsibility for upholding one of the most basic and important tenets of our democracy, which is free and fair elections and access to the ballot for all eligible voters. What about Senator Manchin? What about Senator Sinema? I don't think anyone should be absolved from the responsibility of preserving and protecting our democracy, Are you working? especially when they took an oath to protect and defend our Constitution. Why has the administration not been able to get Senate Democrats on board? We are not giving up. No, but the question was, why, why has it taken but this But you're long? acting as though it's over. Well, I mean, you've, you've It's been, not over. So it's gonna happen by Monday. I'm saying it's not over, and we don't give up. We don't give up, and we will not give up. Are we going to, uh, to see the same Democratic ticket in 2024? I'm sorry, we are thinking about today. I mean, honestly, the, I, I, I know why you're asking the question, because this is the part of the punditry and the, right. the gossip around places like Washington, D.C. Let me just tell you something. We're focused on the things in front of us. We're focused on what we need to do to, to address issues like affordable child care, what we need to do to ensure So there have been that, no conversations that, about 2024? Uh, the American people sent us here to do a job, and right now there's a lot of work to be done, and that's my focus. It sounds Sincerely. like you're at least familiar with some of the punditry. I don't know if you've heard that there've been some, there's been some talk about a, a, a Biden-Cheney ticket perhaps in 2024. Did you read that article? I did not. I'm, I, no, I did not, and I really could care less about the high-class gossip on these issues. Hmm. She had a lot to say. The other thing that I thought was interesting, a lot of interesting things, but a lot of people are at home waiting for those rapid tests. And she sure. said in a week, they might be out to everybody. That's what the vice president yeah, said. Yeah. Uh, now, the reality is we've spoken to a number of companies that actually manufacture these yeah. tests. They have led NBC News to believe that would be a lofty goal. Oh, okay. it, is, it is going to take some time okay. to manufacture some 500 million tests, especially when you look at the empty store shelves right now. Yeah. You've seen the long lines of folks who are waiting for tests, so it mm -hmm. remains to be seen. But mm -hmm. apparently the tests are on order. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have much more of our exclusive conversation with Vice President Harris later this morning on the third hour. Her message to critics who say the administration should have been more prepared for Omicron's rapid rise in the wake of the Delta surge. All right, now let's focus more on that promise mentioned by the vice president to ramp up COVID testing supplies. Many health and school officials saying it is critical to help kids stay in the classroom amid new outbreaks and staffing shortages. NBC Stephanie Goss joins us with more on that piece of the puzzle. Hey, Stephanie, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning. Yeah, that new supply will be critical to keeping kids in the classroom. Despite the really good news that Omicron is not as serious as Delta, it is still a struggle keeping those kids in class. Millions of free COVID tests will soon be headed to schools nationwide. The White House promising a monthly stream of 5 million rapid tests and 5 million PCR tests to K-12 schools in states that apply for them. The first shipments are expected to arrive as early as this month. How important is testing for keeping your schools open safely? It is vital. I think it's next to vaccines and the boosters. It's the only way that we can continue to keep our teachers and our students safe. The new testing push comes as schools struggle to stay open amid Omicron surge. Austin school superintendent says she started deploying administrative staff with teaching experience as substitutes just to keep class going. Even if it isn't as perfect as it would have been with our great teachers, we know that it's better than our students not having that support. Hospitals are struggling, too. At an ICU on the Cleveland Clinic's main campus, 5% of the staff is out sick. The National Guard now helping to clean, test, and deliver meals. The reality is that we have an overwhelming number of COVID patients that are occupying our ICUs, that our emergency rooms are overcrowded, that our teams are exha exhausted. The good news, a new study out of Southern California finds Omicron is far less likely to cause severe illness or death compared to the Delta variant. But that doesn't mean the public should let its guard down. The White House says it's considering ways to increase the availability of higher quality masks. And the CDC has said it's going to update its guidance on masks. The agency's director reiterating any face covering is better than none at all. The best mask that you can that you wear is the one that you will wear and the one you can keep on all day long that you can tolerate in public indoor settings. 
There's an update on the school system in Chicago. Last night, the union voted for an agreement that includes new safety measures, including new testing to get those kids back into class. They were in class yesterday after school had been canceled entirely for five days, Hoda. All right, Stephanie Gosk for us. Uh, Stephanie, thank you. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with more on a major focus of our exclusive conversation with Vice President Kamala Harris. The Biden administration's promise to increase COVID testing nationwide and to distribute 100 million at-home tests to America. Which leads us to a key question this morning. Are there enough of those kits to go around? NBC's Carrie Sanders has been looking into that for us. And Carrie, we see all those people hard at work yeah. behind you. Yeah, good morning. You know, that frenetic activity is to get these COVID tests out because right now, as you noted, there is a much greater demand than there is a supply. And on Saturday, insurance companies will be obligated to start paying for up to eight tests a month if, and it's a big if, if you can find them. At this Miami-Dade factory, 450 employees working around the clock, trying to keep up with the unprecedented demand for home COVID test kits. So we're just at about a million kits per day, and which you, is one of the- still not enough? That's still not enough. So what does that tell us about the demand out there? You know, with the new variants and the new viruses, the demand is just packed up. It's, we just can't make enough. The largest manufacturer in the country, Abbott Laboratories, producing 70 million tests a month. And that's still not enough. The Ongo antigen test here, one of 15 home tests authorized by the FDA. Is there a good reason to be fearful that there's not enough test kits? Uh, we're working around the clock to make sure that everybody that wants to get tested, get tested immediately. But in many stores, shelves are empty. If you are able to score a self-test, be prepared to pay. Two weeks ago, prices were $7, now up to $25. And on eBay, they're going for as much as 80 bucks each. But it's those do-it-yourself tests that are the fastest and easiest way to find out if you're infected. Critical experts say to slowing the spread. So if you test regularly and if you detect it, you are going to be safer, your family is going to be safer, your community is going to be safer. OnGo takes the results one step further. A snapshot of the results are uploaded anonymously to the cloud, allowing artificial intelligence to track geographic COVID clusters. So you can look at a town, say Sudbury, Massachusetts, and if you see a large cluster there, you can predict what's going to happen. Many of them take a snapshot at the same time and we start seeing how it grows. This all comes as the CDC now says some masks we've been using are ineffective against Omicron. Cloth masks like this and these paper masks are really not effective and we need to wear these N95s. How do you put it on? Okay, so you want to hold it in your hand. You actually want to put it onto your nose. Take your first strap and put it right on the top. And you want to take the bottom strap. Right. And you want to go all the way. You want to go under the ears. You never want to crisscross. Okay, now take your two fingers and you want to create a nice seal with that thing. 
Remember when the pandemic began two years ago? Americans were discouraged from using those high quality masks because they were in short supply and doctors and nurses needed them most. It does feel like from a health standpoint, we are constantly moving the goalpost. We're not moving the goalpost. It's that this virus is literally outpacing us and out tricking us and outwitting us in terms of how long it's lasting. So while it may be uh, difficult to find these right now, masks like this, the N95 is very easy to find. As a matter of fact, right here in this warehouse, way back there, those boxes, they have 200 million of these N95 masks. So no shortage of those, but trying to find these right mm -hmm. now, it's a, real, it's a real challenge, guys. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This morning, whether you're looking for a winter escape or a way to escape the cold, we've got you covered. Editor-in-Chief of Travel and Leisure, Jackie Gifford, is here with her best fire and ice travel destinations. Of course, we should say check on COVID guidelines before you travel. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. Let's start where most of our heads are. I would say some heat, right? Take us to the Gulf Coast. Yeah, we all need some warmth right now in New York City. So we're actually talking right now about Tampa Bay and the Gulf Coast area, which includes St. Petersburg and Clearwater. It was named to uh, Travel and Leisure's Best Places to Travel in 2022. You can, of course, go to the beach. There's also cultural attractions. You're looking right now at the Hotel Hyo, which is an amazing new hotel that opened at the end of 2020 in Tampa Bay. It pays um, homage to the area's Cuban roots. Um, you've got a great ceviche restaurant, Florfina. They have a pool there. You you can do yoga on the pool deck. So lots to do in Tampa. And this property I should add is $239 a night, which is relatively affordable for Florida at this time of year. So Jackie, you want some place warm, but you don't care about a beach or the water. What do you suggest? We like Sedona, Arizona. Again, another oh, place no, like that aimed to travel and leisure's list of places to go in 2022. Everybody goes to Sedona for those gorgeous red rocks, for the hiking, the outdoor activities, to be in nature. You can go to Devil's Bridge, which is a popular spot to take photos. And then you've got the Sky Ranch Lodge. It's a historic property. It opened 40 years ago. The rooms have all been updated. They've got a heated pool. You know, it's a really great place to go. Again, if you're into biking and the outdoors, I, I love Sedona. It's Same also here. a wellness cool. spot. I should add to. Remember, we were there. A couple we years. were. It was so peaceful. Jackie, folks, you know, some folks might want to travel internationally, but they're a little hesitant at the moment because of the virus. Tell us how the U.S. Virgin Islands fits into all of that. 
U.S. Virgin Islands, no passport required, right? So that's a great place to go. Again, if you're a little bit more hesitant, you've got three islands, St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. John. St. John is two thirds uh, protected park, the U.S. Virgin Islands National Park. The temperature right now is in the 70s and 80s. So if you're looking for some sun and some relaxation, this is a great place to go. The Concordia Echo Resort, it's $188 a night. And what they, it's, um, it's on the southeastern coast. What they have are these sort of wooden bungalow tent-like structures. They're solar powered. Powered, and then they've got natural breezes you let in um, through the canvas windows and walls and you can go to all sorts of beaches nearby. I really like St. John. Again, if you're looking for something that's eco-friendly and you want to reconnect with nature. Let's turn now to some icy destinations. Why is Idaho a great spot for folks looking for a winter adventure? McCall, Idaho is a great place for skiing and snowboarding and sledding and all those winter activities. Act, outdoor activities that we love. You can go. Um, you can go uh, snowshoeing on tons of trails in Ponderosa State Park. Brundage Mountain is the place to ski. Idaho has seen a, really a boom in population during the pandemic, and again, people like to go because of all those outdoor activities right now. And then the Shore Lodge. It's one hundred and ninety-five dollars a night. This is actually a property that's rated really highly by travel and leisure readers. It's on um, Lake Payette. All right, Payette. Jackie. Thank you so much. Way to go, Idaho. We'll be right back. Yeah. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's this day. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Our week long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Okay, all month long, we're talking about living a life we love. And sometimes that means leaving your comfort zone, and that can really make you feel alive. Yeah, it's exactly why we said yes to diving right into the new year with a very frigid polar plunge. So grab a warm blanket. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Yes, no. Okay, get cozy and take a look. Every winter at the turn of the new year, the boldest among us brave the cold and just their swimsuits for a dip into near freezing water. That's right, it's the polar bear plunge. What seems like a wild stunt for daredevils is so much more. This 100-year-long tradition has raised millions of dollars for charity and helps countless risk takers feel refreshed for a new year. Famous past polar bears include Lady Gaga, Jimmy Fallon, and even our Today Show pals, Alan Craig. This is the perfect time to face like a brand new challenge and see if you can do it. It's like, what do we want to do in 2022? You know, let's do something cool. And by cool, I mean frigid. The beach is my second home. So if you're going to do a challenge and you're doing one on the beach, you got my number. Okay, I've never done a polar plunge, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. But I'm imagining Baywatch you know, slow, beautiful running into warm temperature. It all seemed great when we were driving up here. Yeah. It all seemed great when we got out of the car. And then all of a sudden and we all felt sudden, the, the wind. This is the illusion of a summer day. Yes. but. We know right now it's it cold. is biting cold. We're a little nervous. Yes. By the way, I just went to the bathroom before this and the toilet seat was cold. <laughs> so, so that tells you I'm everything. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so freezing. 
You might have noticed we're not the only ones looking to check an item off our bucket list. We're joined by the official Long Beach polar bears. These New Yorkers have been jumping into the ocean every winter for 24 years, raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They heard we were coming and they couldn't resist an excuse to plunge. Any advice for us newbies? It's timing, yeah. timing. It's, it's time. Wait. But you're going to help us with the timing, you're, right? Yes, we're, gonna help you. we're, we're all going to be together. I was going to tell you we need to wear those, no? No, that's a yeah. negative. Yeah. Never go in the ocean or any body of water without a lifeguard. Oh, that's true. You know. A good looking one. Yes. Let's take a look at So you'll save us. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. We couldn't stall any longer. It was time to plunge. I feel amazing. My hands are numb. That was crazy. My hair is wet. We went under. We did it. We have to check our vitals to make sure we're okay. Still alive. Okay, wait. I so, so fast, and now I get it. You didn't actually die. <laughs> what was going through your minds when Hoda, you didn't dive and Jenna, you I died? I didn't know till just this First moment. First of all, I didn't realize that she decided to go all we in like that. We said we were gonna die. No, we said we were gonna get our hair wet. That's what the agreement was. The guy was. said, do a shallow dive. <laughs> no, well, that was the guy's interpretation. We decided, are we gonna get our hair wet? Yes, no, yes, no. We decided, yes. Yeah, you know so that one of us went like this. Where one of you, where you have two friends and you're jumping off a high dive <laughs> and the other one doesn't jump? I jump. No, no, no. It would be, I, I would, if I had stayed on the beach, <laughs> well, then that would have been different. But let's, I, let's, I, let's. I thought let's. the legs were coming up. <laughs> I like to see her kicking legs. By the way, not for nothing, Jenna, you have a good dive. Who knew? Well, are you a swimmer? No. <laughs> Thank you. So be sure to tune in tomorrow on today. It is going to be a huge show, a special show. Yeah, it's not like our average shows every day. This one is our 70th anniversary show. We'll have a fun look back at all the moments that have happened throughout the years on today. Can't wait to share those with you guys. Let me see you then. today all day. Next on Saucy, Anthony Contrino is whipping up three dishes any true lover of Italian food should never live without. First up, he's making a classic creamy risotto. Then it's a super easy red sauce. And finally, an irresistibly crispy arancini. Oh, this rice is nice. I love risotto. It can be a bit time consuming to make, but it's actually quite easy and it always impresses. You can make risotto even tastier by deep frying it. I like to transform it into one of Sicily's most popular street foods, arancini. These OG rice bowls can be found pretty much everywhere in the region where my gram comes from, Palermo. Today, I'm making a classic creamy risotto. 
I'll use the leftovers to make my irresistible arancini that I love to serve over my no-fail everyday tomato sauce. For cocktail hour, it's another taste of Sicily. My blood orange and white wine coolers that are sure to be the hit at your next summer party. Risotto is something that I think that everyone should learn how to make. And it's a technique that's quite simple to master. Now, you can add any flavor that you'd like to it. Mushrooms are super traditional. I like to fold in some roasted butternut squash in the fall, a fresh zesting of lemon for a delicious risotto al limone. Or if you're feeling super bougie, you can shave some fresh black or white truffle on top. I like to keep it simple with this base to really let the flavors of white wine and Parmigiano Reggiano really shine through. The first thing you need to do is warm some stock. We're gonna need this a little later on in the process, but we want it to be ready. We're not looking for it to be simmering, just stay nice and warm. In the meantime, we can get the rest of our ingredients all set. I have two small shallots, but you can use one large instead. I go this way and then the opposite direction. I'll just give my knife a quick run over just to make sure I didn't miss a piece or two, but kind of nailed it. Set that aside and a couple of cloves of garlic. Oh God, where did we get this garlic from? Peeled garlic from now on. We want to mince this up as well. I have the rest of my ingredients ready to go. So all that's left for me to do is just open up this bottle of white wine. A good dry white wine will do here. Like I've said in the past, something that you would drink. I'm using a nice Pinot Grigio. Make sure you go deep enough. There's nothing worse than breaking a cork. Ta-da. We'll just set that aside. Time to start cooking. I'm gonna put this pan over a medium heat. And to that, we will add some butter. Just one tablespoon for a little extra flavor. And then two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Give it a swirl, get that butter melted. And we can add our shallots. Looks like a lot, right? We're not looking to get any color on these shallots just to soften them. So we're literally just going to saute these for a couple of minutes, two to three. Time to add our garlic. Just wanna cook this garlic for a minute, just until it's fragrant. It's fragrant. Then our rice. One cup right into our pan. We want to toast this rice a little before we start adding the liquid to cook it. I'm using carnaroli rice. It is considered the king of Italian rices. It has a lot of starch in it, which is going to add to the creaminess. And it also cooks to a beautiful al dente. I think this guy is getting thirsty. Time to add a half a cup of wine. Looks about right. Now this is where the technique really kicks in. Over this medium, medium low heat, you want to keep stirring constantly until there's almost no liquid left. Like right now, before you start adding your warm broth 
just a little bit at a time, about a ladleful at a time. And keep stirring and repeating the process. The reason we're adding warm stock is because we don't want to halt the cooking of our rice. What makes risotto so creamy is, unlike pasta, where you strain the water, you're keeping everything, all those starches remain in the pan and it just keeps getting thicker and creamier and delicious. I'm way too passionate about risotto. <laughs> you see how all of my liquid is almost gone? I'm actually gonna lower this heat a little bit. and add another ladleful of our stock. Just keep stirring, adding liquid as needed. And this is probably gonna take about 40, 45 minutes. And do note, you might not need all of the broth. It's better to have too much than too little. Look how creamy. It's like the parting of the seas. It takes a really long time for it to sort of come back together. I'm gonna get my last couple of ingredients on standby so it's ready to go. Okay, I think we can add our cheese. Half a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. The good stuff, the real stuff. And a quarter cup of my secret ingredient, looks about right, mascarpone cheese. As if this wasn't creamy enough, this is gonna put it over the top. You can see how creamy it is. It's almost like rice pudding. It's so creamy and decadent that you don't need that much of it. Then to finish it off, simply a drizzle of really good olive oil, just a couple of cracks of fresh black pepper, and of course, just a little bit more Parmigiano Reggiano. Or a lot of it more. Buon appetito. Perfection. So good, so creamy, so delicious. Don't worry, these leftovers are not gonna go to waste. Never in my house. While it's still warm, I'm gonna transfer it to a sheet pan, spread it out nice and thin, let it come to room temperature, then we'll cover it and get it in the fridge to chill so that we can make the crispiest, the creamiest arancini you've ever had. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. Is your last one. <laughs> 
<laughs> Was talking smack part of this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I always serve my arancini with a tomato sauce, and my family's been making this forever. Once a month, my parents would make a vat of it so that we always had it on hand, even packing it and freezing it up just to bring on vacation with us. God forbid we couldn't have sauce on a Sunday when we were in Florida. This sauce uses just a few staple ingredients, at least staple ingredients in my house, and comes together fairly quickly. First up, a sweet onion. It adds a little bit of sweetness and balances out the acidity of the tomatoes. Any sweet onion will do. I feel like my gram had this sauce going within minutes and it would just be simmering away and we would be in the kitchen trying to like sneak a dip of bread into it before we got yelled at. I'm gonna get this into my pot, get it out of my way. A nice healthy amount of garlic, five cloves. Thankfully, I have some left over from my risotto. And just thinly slice it. Obviously, I love garlic. <laughs> and that's gonna go in at this point as well. Next up, extra virgin olive oil, about a third of a cup. Okay, let's put this over medium heat and start to saute that garlic and onion. This is definitely one of my favorite smells in the world. It means that somebody's cooking up something delicious. We want these onions to get nice, soft, translucent, but not take on any color. Just stir it pretty frequently, just so that you can make sure they don't burn. Okay, these are looking perfect. Time to add our tomatoes. I have three 28 ounce cans of what were Palati whole peel tomatoes that I pureed in a blender. And we're gonna throw that right into our pot. Gonna give this a stir and add our last few ingredients. We'll add a teaspoon and a half of salt. We'll go back later and make sure that doesn't need any more. Some fresh black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of dried oregano and a pinch of red pepper flakes. If you like a spicier sauce, of course, add more. And then basil, decent bit of basil, about a quarter of a cup, which basically means this whole plant. And stems are fine. Kind of a sad looking plant. Right on in. The basil is just so aromatic and in my opinion, that's what makes a really good tomato sauce, is the basil flavor that's infused and permeated throughout this whole sauce. At this point, you wanna bring your sauce to a boil, then immediately reduce it to a simmer, stirring every 10 to 15 minutes until it's thick, all the flavors have come together, and it's ready to be served. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, the news never stops. 
The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. This is your moment. Your moment. Your moment. I've never met a rice bowl that I don't like, but these are truly the best. It has everything going on. It's creamy, it's cheesy, and has a crispy exterior. They're not your typical traditional Sicilian rice balls or arancini. I like them to be on the smaller side. They're a little bit more elegant and perfect for a cocktail party. The first thing that I need to do is set up a dredging station. I don't always use flour, but this is one of those times when I do, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So about three quarters of a cup. Up next, a couple of eggs. Whisk those up real well. And finally, some panko. I've tried it both ways with standard breadcrumb and panko. This is the way to get the perfect crispy exterior. So about a cup and a half of that. Now that our dredging station is complete, on to the cheesy part. I have some fresh mozzarella. These are called ciliegine because they are the size of a ciliegine, cherry. Gonna need 12 for this recipe. And I'm just taking them out of their liquid and placing them on a paper towel. I want to get these nice and dry so that we can wrap them in the risotto and it's not too slippery. I have my chilled risotto from earlier. It's nice, firm, and set. Feels a little weird, but it's exactly what we want it to be. We want it to be pliable so that we can shape it around our chiliagine. I'm taking a two tablespoon cookie scoop or measure, it's one ounce and scraping up some of our risotto. Don't worry if you rip the parchment that's underneath, just make sure it doesn't wind up in your risotto mixture here. That is not the crunch we're looking for. Press it in, make sure you're getting the full two tablespoons. My stomach is growling. Oops. Last one. Okay, now for the fun part. We're going to wrap our chiliagine inside our risotto. Take one of your mozzarella balls and slowly shape the chilled risotto around to enclose it. Takes a little patience. Give it a little roll. Don't worry about making a perfect circle at this point. We will refine the shape later on after we dredge them. Cute. 
Now keep going. Take your time. It's really important that the cheese is in the center of your risotto so that when you fry them, it doesn't leak out. It's a little sticky, but that's what's helping to keep everything all together. I like my arancini on the small side because of the cheese to risotto ratio. But traditionally in Sicily, they're much larger, pear-shaped or orange-shaped, hence arancini, and are often filled with meat sauce, with peas or prosciutto. Last one. Okay, that just about does it. At this point, wash your hands. You definitely want to start with clean, dry hands for the dredging process. That's all there is to it. This size is the perfect size for a cocktail party. And then you don't have to feel so guilty when you eat three or four of them. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna give my hands a quick rinse, make a little room so that we can fry these bad boys up. I have a high-sided skillet filled with a generous amount of vegetable oil. You want there to be enough oil for the balls to be completely submerged. We're looking for a deep fry, not a shallow fry. Be careful. Cook them in batches of about four, just so that you can control the temperature of your oil. in about five minutes, and these are looking great. They're beautiful golden brown. And I know that that cheese inside is nice and gooey. Right onto our paper towel lined sheet pan, and immediately crush up some sea salt right on top so that it melts from that hot oil and just gives a little bit of extra seasoning to our arancini. Don't they look great? Beautiful. Our arancini are beautiful golden brown. They're nice and hot just the way they need to be served. Let's get it plated up. I'm gonna go with a fairly simple presentation. Just a generous puddle of my everyday tomato sauce right in the center of a plate. Just like that. And then I think three is a very nice and generous portion for our arancini. A little extra cheese never hurt anyone. And last but not least, if you can find it, some micro basil. You can use regular basil. If you haven't figured out by now, I'm just over the top and bougie. Look how beautiful this looks. It's like the Italian flag on a plate. These arancini make the perfect appetizer for cocktail hour and I have the perfect drink to mix up. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just fits. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus comes back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just fits. days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. 
what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. When blood oranges are in season, I can't wait to get my hands on them and use them for as many things as possible, like this blood orange and white wine cooler. This is not the stuff you were sneaking behind your parents back in high school. It's a little bougier than that. This blood orange is doing double duty. Half of it's gonna go into our cocktail to help flavor it, and the other half is gonna be a beautiful garnish at the end. So cut one half into wedges, and you can throw this into a cocktail mixer or a cocktail shaker, whatever you have. The other half I'll have again, and then just slice into half moons. Look how beautiful, deep, vibrant red that is. Super delicious, and it's also very nutritious. You're also going to need a half of a lime. Save the other half for something later. Cut that into a few wedges as well. Then a little rosemary, about two sprigs, Add that and muddle it up. Put some elbow strength into it. We wanna get all of those citrus juices out and the oils and fragrance of that rosemary, which I can smell already. Look at that beautiful fuchsia color. Okay, to that, one cup of our Pinot Grigio. Stir it up. and then strain it into two glasses. One cocktail for now, and then one for right after. <laughs> Isn't that a gorgeous color? Then to amplify our blood orange flavor, some blood orange soda. Half a cup to each of your glasses. All that's missing are some garnishes. Throw a couple, a few of those half moons into your glasses. Any way they fall. Some more rosemary. I have one last surprise. It is summer after all, so some edible flowers. You can find these in the produce section of your supermarket. That'll do. I don't know about you, but I think this is one gorgeous cocktail. It also happens to be extremely delicious. Mm. This is not your average wine cooler. Cheers. mounting in Washington at a virtual standstill, our exclusive interview with Vice President Kamala Harris taking on Republicans and members of her own party in the heated battle over voting rights. I don't think anyone should be absolved from the responsibility 